Try to do this really quick. If you have any questions, if you want to discuss something amongst yourself, just do it. I'm a class, I'm an expert. I'll just try to get something small. So, uh, these are some of the things we're going to be talking about revenue, costs, or how and when are we profitable. We're going to do a little review of financial statements just really quick because that's, that's a whole world and obviously we were not going to be able to get to that in a half an hour and we are going to talk a little bit about investors and, and the relationship we might have with them and eventually we may So okay, the starting point, the, the objective. Uh, hopefully each of you has profit and if you don't have profit, because that's the, the, the whole point here. We are, we are all trying to build businesses, we used to have a gallery which we didn't but now we don't so uh, all of you are trying to to build a business, and the business is defined because it makes profit for its investors, for its creators, for its founders. So it's something that you should, you should really keep in mind. Uh, and profit is actually a, a very simple thing. It's, you need to, to get some money in for that revenue, and you have to make sure that that amount of money is larger than the other amount, is, which is your cost. So, um, revenue. We have to bring money, and that's something that from now on in this program you should really be thinking about all the time. And I think in the feedback session we're gonna start pushing you more on that. How are you going to make money? When are you going to be making money? And because that's very important, and especially once you graduate from this program and start talking with investors or something like that, that's probably their their main concern. And that's what they're going to be really you about. How much money are you going to make? So. You have to know the answers to some of those questions. So, uh, money comes actually is really simple. You need a business model, and there are some examples here. Uh, I think uh, Caitlin talked about that the other day also. 
But I, at this point, most of you are very familiar with all this one. If you're a fan, you have your typical premium. I think we all know what that is. You have your sub subscription model, your affiliate marketing, which is like a good example would be like Amazon affiliates, you know, where you have your own site with some Amazon links and they pay you for that. That would be affiliate marketing from Amazon's point of view. Uh, you have your ad funded businesses, which we have with that, and online shopping e-commerce. That's that's the regular part. So the cost part. It's probably a little bit more complex than something you should really think about. Uh, it basically depends on your business model and it splits, I mean costs in general split in variable and fixed costs. You can see that in the graph. Variable goes up and down as you increase or decrease the number of units you sell and your fixed costs tend to uh, remain steady or grow much more slowly. So okay, uh, fixed and variable costs tend to be very different depending if your business is a services-based business or a product based business. For example, Cavalio here would be a perfect example for a product-based business. He's going to be manufacturing something, so his variable cost will be directly tied to the amount of units he owns. So he will have some staff to run his company. And all these costs will vary depending on the number of, of units that he builds in a given period of time. And most of the other ideas probably here would fall into the services category because you're, you're, you're not already manufacturing anything, so your variable costs would grow with the number of users, but it's more, it's more fuzzy. But yeah. Okay, so metrics. Uh, Who's with is coming after me? He's going to be talking a lot about metrics. And I'm just going to go over two or three uh, very financially oriented metrics. And most metrics, I mean, in general, we speak that there are useful metrics and balanced metrics. Balanced metrics is, oh, I have so and so many billion followers on Facebook or, or in Twitter. But almost, you can almost never translate that into actual. So metrics, they have a function, and it's, they have to allow you to answer difficult questions. Mainly the kind of questions that your investors will ask you if you keep this question. How much money are you making? How much money are you making from your client? That kind of thing. In general, balanced metrics, they're nice to have, but they don't have much impact on your actual business. So what kind of questions should you be asking yourself, and what metrics will allow you to answer them? For example, how much money do you spend to get an event? This is probably, at this stage in your business, the most important question you should be answering. And the answer to this question is usually called customer acquisition costs. Uh, figuring out all the steps you take to get a new customer. And then calculating how much money do you spend in any other of those steps and doing your best in transferring that to a particular customer. Obviously, it's very hard for it to be exact, but it's something you should definitely think about because it answers a lot of questions, not only about the numbers, but also about the process. Because when you think this through, you realize that you have to do a lot more than you thought to get a new customer. You realize that there are several costs that you probably didn't uh, consider at first, so it's uh, it's a very valuable exercise to to do the effort and then come up with this number. There's a there's something that usually happens when you start talking about numbers, and it's when I was in your place when I was sitting here, I was always thinking like, yeah, but those numbers are bullshit. I'm gonna go through this program, I'm gonna get the number, and it's gonna mean shit. But I think at this point the value is in the process in getting pen, your pencil, and figuring out how much you think it's going to cost you. At the end, we all agree it's not going to be the same number in real life as the one you come up with when you're doing this. But but you're going to get a lot of insights into your business if you go through the process and get the number. So, get the number. so for example, let's say you have your strategy in place and your strategy consists in all calling, you know, hiring some interns and having them pick up the phone and start calling people and see if they want to buy your product. Uh, your next step is going to be sending email, an email campaign through MailChimp, and probably paying your, yourself a salary and your profile. 
and say that's your that's your strategy. So that could cost you maybe three thousand, four thousand euros. So let's say that after you do all this for one month and figure it out and get get to the bottom and see how many customers you might get. Let's say you got 150 customers. In that case, your customer acquisition cost would be 25 euros per customer. Again, at, at the beginning, you will not know all the answers. But you might be, when, you, when you start thinking about it, you realize that you can get at least a pretty good estimate. You say, well, let's assume that of every email I get, I get so many and so many customers and, and that kind of thing. And you can, you can keep it that. So that's the customer acquisition cost. How much money are your customers worth to you? How much money are you going to get from them in their life? That's another very important question. It's very related to the last one. And the answer to that is the customer lifetime value. This, this kind of thing you will see now that, I, now that we, we've talked about it. If you keep reading about startups and things, you're at least, this comes up every time. So everyone's talking about their customer lifetime value, customer value. OK, so for a very simple example to understand that. Let's say your company produces one single thing, one single product, for uh, example, a coffee. And <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's the only one that works for this example. And let's say that your thing that you're selling can only be sold once to a person. And let's say you're selling them for their very really cheap coffins and they're, sell, they're selling for 20 euros. So in that case, your customer lifetime value will be 20 euros because that's the most you're going to get out of any customer in the business. So assuming that we had the. OK, this is a more complex example, but maybe more realistic. Let's say you're a no, you know, telecommunication company. And let's say the average consumption of your customers is 30 euros a month. And let's say you're, you have a churn rate. That, that's another key value you're going to keep hearing. Your churn rate is the ratio between the number of customers you get in every month and the number of customers for subscription services like telco or yeah, in general for subscription services. The churn rate is very important. So let's say you have a churn rate of 10 of 10 percent, and you have a profit a, pro, a profit margin on every one of your customers of, of 20 percent. So in that case, we would be using this formula. But the important thing is not the formula. You can always go on the internet right now and find this formula and just do it more. The probably each one applies to a, to a to different business models. But in this case, once you apply the formula, you get a customer lifetime value of 60. So, after extreme simplification, but it's a very good guide, if your customer lifetime value is bigger than your customer acquisition cost, then in principle, at least you have a business because you have the ability to eventually make money. So, in the, in the, in the examples we have, we have a 25 euro customer acquisition cost. The first company, the coming one, was probably not profitable, and the other one was. So another very crucial question, how long can you stay in that? This is probably the most important question. Uh, I said that already. But this, this one is very important too because yeah, well, it, it, it means how, how long can you keep your doors open, how long are you going to keep And this one is answered by the word. This, this one is actually very easy. Let's say you have an initial investment of around 10,000 euros. And let's say you get down to your business and you make some calculations and you say, well, I can start in the first or two months, I can start making 2,000 euros safe. Okay? And let's say your expenses include the salaries of the people you have working for you, their rent and utilities, uh, the costs of the goods you're selling. And let's, that adds up to 8,700 euros. So with, with these numbers, really fast, you can see that monthly, you are burning through 7,700. So that's your burn. That's because somebody asked you, oh, what's your burn? That's your burn. And that's important because it means that with this amount of investment, you can keep your doors open with four, during, for 14, 14 months, which sounds like a lot, but it's not. So that's a wake up call. Because in the US, we see huge investment. You see, ah, I just had this idea, and somebody comes and gives you half a million dollars. But in Europe, it's not like that. 
So you really have to get into your mind and you have to keep your burn rate down because that's basically your lifetime to figure stuff out and make it work. So that's very important. Keep in mind your burn rate, keep it as low as you can because in during the dot during the dot com bubble you remember hearing about oh this cool startup they have a pool inside their meeting and inside their meeting room and they have pool tables and they have ping pong tables and masseuses. Yeah that's that's how you get your burn rate really high. And that's how you get a problem. So keep that in mind. Okay, now financial statements. How do we So there are three things. Um, yeah, that's it, the most important ones. It's a profit and loss statement, your balance sheet statement, and your cash flow. Again, they, they have a purpose in this answering several questions. Your profit and loss business is uh, your profit and loss statement is telling you how much are you selling and how much is the customer. Your balance sheet is telling is talking about your assets. It's telling how much do you own and how much do you owe. And your cash flow is uh, how much do you collect and how much do you pay. So your financial statement, your profit and loss statement, is it has uh, it's it's not that realistic because there are some I don't I don't want to call them tricks because it's accepted practice, but there are a lot of things you can do to your profit and loss to make it look good, and you will see a lot of companies with really good profit and loss statements that are good. So basically, it says how much are you selling, how much is it costing you. And probably most importantly, how much taxes do you have to pay? That's where all the magic comes, comes from. Because if you you make it so your profit and loss ends at a zero or a very low profit, you just get to pay less taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, your balance sheet tells you your long term prospects. How much do you own? How much do you owe? And those things should be kept at a Balance. It's, it's, in general, it's not good to own everything about the company, and, and it's never a thing to owe too much of the company. So, but this, that's why I said I'm going to go over this quickly because that's for much ahead. So, yeah, the uh, a typical balance sheet is divided in two parts you have your assets, which is one category, and you have your liabilities or your debt. And your stockholder equity, which is uh, here in Spanish, is called capital, the money of the of the source of the buyers. Mm -hmm. And those those things should add up, and it should be the same number. And yeah, basically, your assets is, is how much you own, and the bottom part is how much you owe. And uh, lastly, about the financial statement, we have our cash flow statement. It's this one is a more practical thing. It's the, the other ones are more like legal oriented, but the cash flow is really important for your day-to-day -day business because it's, it's somehow related to your burn rate. It's it's how much money are you actually collecting and how much money are you actually paying, and that says at the end it helps you answer the same question: how long can you can give your door? There's a thing here that I like to point out that is not the same thing to invoice someone. And actually collect money from it. Because think about it from, for example, your your electricity company. They send you a bill, let's say on the first of the month. That bill takes uh, maybe two or three weeks to get your house, let's say. You get it and eventually it goes through your bank account and they actually get the money. So from the time they invoice you and from the time they actually got money in their bank account, there was a period, let's say it was three weeks. So from the point of view of your profit and loss, once they have invoiced you, they can say that they have made a sale and they can put it on, on their profit and loss. But they, they have no money from you yet. It's only when they actually go through the process of collecting and getting the money from you that they can put the money in the account. So the, it's, I mean, invoicing and getting money is not the same thing. And it's something you should keep in mind because that's, that's when you get a very good profit and loss statement. And, uh, Okay, so investors. This is probably a long shot, but it's something that you should keep in mind. Investors are people who put money in your company, and they come in various shapes and flavors. So usually the first category of an investor is what 
it's usually called the triads, friends, fools, and family. This is probably where your seed capital investment just to get started is usually small amounts, and these people that is not doing it because they see a great, a great business opportunity, but it's must be because they care about you and they would like to receive your business growth. But it's not a business decision, but it's an emotional decision. You're doing it because of that. Uh, you have your public money, which again, in that case, is an advantage year in year. There's a lot of public money going into startups and that kind of thing. It's usually a good option. They have very good conditions. They uh, used to be very generous, but right now not so much. It's a crazy thing, but yeah, it's uh, it's something that keep, you should definitely definitely keep in mind, and it can really help you out when you're starting up. You have your angel investors. This is like um, these are individual people. It's not a company that is investing in you, but it's someone, usually a rich person, that is the does this. They give money to companies in the hopes that eventually some bigger investor is going to come and they're going to get their money back. But they invest probably less than a million euro, and they usually stay for as long as the uh, for as long as they can before someone really big comes and they they get their money and. and so in this case, they are investors slash mentors. No, they, they, they are not so, so I mean, they are really because we are already, but their, their invest, investment strategy is a bit different. And then you have your venture capitalists. And it's something you should keep in mind. Venture capitalists are not necessarily your friends. They're not there to you know, make your company grow and see. They are a very profit-oriented enterprise. They want to come in, they want to come up with a lot of money, and you should keep that in mind because sometimes their best interest is not aligned with your best interest. So it's something you should always keep in mind when, when talking to a potential venture capitalist. And do you need one? That's something you should ask yourself because, again, it adds a lot of complexity to the whole entrepreneurship. No, dealing with investors. So unless you really need to, unless you're planning to grow really fast, really broad, to go to several countries and you need to do it in two or three years, consider bootstrapping because sometimes maybe it's a bit slower, but I think it's less viable. So it's something you should think about. I mean, don't always go for the let's go to the investors thing because there are other things and you should discuss it. Excuse me. Yeah. And what is bootstrapping? Bootstrapping means uh, growing your business with your own means. And starting with maybe some seed capital, but then it tries to make the, the business grow organically. Mm -hmm. To grow with whatever money you can get from your actual customers. Because what you see, for example, maybe a counter example, a non bootstrap company, for example, is Twitter. Twitter got a ton of money from investors and they spend like 10 or 6 or 5 years without never getting a penny from their customers. So that's a non-bootstrap company. A bootstrap company is one that is designed to grow based on the money that's coming from their customers. So this is how much money we can get in a year, so this is how big we can be. And we can uh, plan to grow accordingly. So it's like if we only have 10 customers, probably you, should, you shouldn't think about expanding to the whole Europe and America. That's, that's the thing. Okay, so business valuation. And why do you care? Business valuation is putting a value on it. That's something that you should care about because it dictates a lot of your um, What about funding? Well, that's a good question. I guess if I could add that to my headlines. <laughs> but yeah, it's something very cool. I don't know if that many companies have actually been successful with that one. But yeah, it's an option. Here in Spain, I understand that the laws changed recently and they kind of. So we're going to start off by going. So yeah. In the US, uh, for example, a lot of people's reactions. Yeah, the law in the US is very similar. Yeah, it was out of like three months before. I mean, Put uh, links to the to the quantities that commerce can because uh, uh, it's funding. It's not uh, most of the projects that are crowdfunding. In fact, are 
shopping, shopping in the <coughs> forest, no? But if you are funding, you are uh, taking risks and all the kind of it has to, to be put into uh, it has to not be nothing uh, uh, or whatever, but uh, some to protect the, the small investors. I think the point is that it, it lends itself to abuse. You, a lot of people could get screwed. I think that's why they're making this loss. But yeah. So I, I'm not going to add a problem. Okay, so this is moderation. I'm going to talk about it with an example because this way it's uh, easier. Let's say you get a million euros. And you're really happy, and you may invite your friends out and party and stuff. And then there could be two scenarios here. The first one, after the investment, the investor owns 35% of your company. That's not that good. Or he could end up owning 5% of your company. And the uh, difference between these scenarios is valuation. In the first case, your company was valued at, at 3 million. So that, that's why the investor now owns a big chunk of your of your company. And in the, in the other case, your company was valued at 20 million. And that's for you. And I'm not saying that you should always fight for the biggest valuation. Uh, when we talk here with, with the investors, we have some really cool investors that usually come and talk to you on the panel session. The, the good investors are not that obsessed with this. And they'll probably go with a valuation that's very good. But that's probably one of the ways you can tell a good investor company. Really, investor can come and say, "Oh, you well, this amount of equity in your company, and it's going to shock you." Back. So that's something you should you should keep in mind. And with that, I think we are all through. And I hope you liked it. And if you have any more things you would like to discuss, it's fine. Which is the, the minimum uh, uh, interest that or yeah percentage of the investment that the investor is expecting? Uh, percentage of what? Of your yeah. profit? Of it. Um, I'm not sure about that. I mean, it's uh, the bank you put your money and you get that. Oh, okay. But an investor, if they are going to take the use of the inspection, what's the meaning of my yeah. Uh, Again, in the, in the last session, we're, have, we're going to have some investors, and they're going to tell you some real life stories about this. So I think we probably should wait for them and let them tell you in their real life experience. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you are running your customer acquisition uh, if you have no idea how many clients you are going to, to have, uh, in order to have very uh, scenario with the investor run, um, which number do you decide is you know, related to how many customers? Well, if, if you're talking to an investor, they are really good about this. And if you tell them some bullshit number you made up on Excel, they're going to know. So, if you're talking to an investor, you should at least have made some kind of experiment to start calling yourself and see how many people you can call in an hour. And see how many people will give you at least a favorable answer. And that at least you have some data. Because what's really easy to happen is that you think, oh, I'm going to call a thousand people now. And then you actually pick up the phone and realize that it's really hard to get just the time to dial and, and talk to someone. And you realize that in your best. Today, you can maybe call 10 people or 15 an hour. Then you at least have an opportunity to there. And the usual way is that you get like that maximum number. Like said, let's say, for example, let's, let's see the calling. You can say, okay, so I can call 15 an hour. Usually, what you do is you apply a percentage to that. You say, well, let's say I can call 15 an hour. Of those 15, maybe 10 don't hang up with me. So of those 10, maybe half at least listen to me. And uh, of those five, I can maybe get one. So you know that with one hour of your time, 
you can call 15 people an hour and get at least one yes. So when you, okay, so that's one hour, and then I say in a week, it's five days. So you grow from that. And you can do, I mean, for example, with the email. You say, okay, I'm going to send 10,000 emails because somehow I bought a mailing list and I have 10,000 email addresses of people that might be interested. And then you start wondering, well, let's say I'm going to send 10,000 emails and probably half of them will be ignored. Of those that actually read the email, probably 90% will delete it, so I'll get the 10% of that. And then you do, you do that process all the way, and then you come up with an answer. So you say, okay, so I'm going to send 10,000 emails. That's going to cost me $500 uh, euros. And I'm going to, from that, I'm going to get 10,000. So, okay, that's all right. And you go like that for all your processes, because maybe you're, you're very, for example, yourself, you have a complex business, so you probably are going to have to go and talk to people and make presentations, and I was going to get it, you have to go again and do another presentation. That's a complicated business process, a selling process. So you obviously, obviously your, scope, your costs are going to be pretty But you can see maybe, I mean, the three of you can maybe do five presentations a week. And those are, I mean, that just like that, and maybe you can come up with them. But if you are talking to an investor, you should have some real data, at least some what about the, the typical approach to first calculate you know, the total market size, then calculate your, let's uh, say, capacity to address a portion of this market, and then build two or three different I think that's the traditional approach. Yeah. That's the traditional approach. This is a very personal opinion from an expert. I think that most of the time that's the issue. In, in the sense that you don't really know. Yeah. You, I mean, and usually when people come with that kind of thing, they say, okay, in the, we have 7 billion people in the world. I mean, if we get just 1% of that, that doesn't mean much, I think. Because anyone can say that. And if you show to me that you have actually done some numbers with with real scenarios, then I might be. But if you come on, Start speaking about percentages of a uh, market that you have no idea how you're going to get to or how you're going to use them. I would find it hard to believe. You. But again, that's a very, no, no. very personal thing. But we should, we should see what the investment is. Okay, thanks, guys. Things that we did that well and how we reacted to that. Okay, and where we are right now, which is just in the middle of nowhere, uh, doing, doing this well, but uh, still with a long, a long road to to go. Hopefully, the presentation. because everything counts. So this is me. As I always say, I'm not from the family of old Buddha, I promise. Uh, <laughs> and, and now, yeah, and, and nothing to do. Um, so this is me, I mean, again, for other of 24 symbols, uh, my uh, card says, I mean, this card says that I'm responsible for business development. 
uh, and that's what I do most of the times, but I also worry about the metrics uh, that's basically part of my responsibility. That's basically something I look forward to because uh, since I come from the technical part of the world, I, I'm uh, I have engineering computer science and a PhD in computer science in data integration. So that's why I love data. And, and even though my role right now, as I would say, is like I'm an engineer that negotiates contracts, that's what I do with publishers. Uh, basically, you know, this is something I'm really interested in, and that's why I try to keep on going. So, just a little uh, um, introduction to 24 Symbols. At the beginning, it was known as a Spotify for books, which I still think is the best way to describe uh, a service like ours. But the truth is that we've evolved a little bit uh, since then. Uh, now we try to be a bit more generic, talking about the service to read and discover digital books uh, that work on any device. Um, I will go into a little bit of detail later, but basically this is a cloud-within service, so you don't need to download books, uh, e-books, uh, you just need to be connected, as, and, and the book is streamed, like at YouTube, for example, but with books, and um, that works on different mobile devices. So, so, so what's, what's, what's going to the metrics part? So what we do basically is uh, we negotiate uh, contracts with publishers because believe it or not, what we try to do is legal. Uh, so we negotiate a contract with, with those publishers. Uh, then we of course try to create the best product available worldwide. Um, and of course, that, what that means is that we try to have as many users as possible. Uh, those are things that need to be measured. Uh, everything you know, from the publishers, the books, the categories, the authors that we have in our database. Uh, of course, how the product is behaving, how users are using the product itself, but for us also important how users read and how users behave. So we don't only worry about how users grow, which is something very nice and something that I guess most of you want to have your products to, to happen, uh, but also how they behave in order to improve our products. Uh, this last part is something that is relatively new, is that since uh, we raised a uh, new round last year, uh, we started to, because of a partnership design, we started to work with uh, mobile carriers. So the idea here is that around the world, we are reaching the us with mobile carriers, so they are the ones offering the reading service to their subscribers. Uh, that's quite interesting, potentially really huge, because carriers have millions of users. And uh, we worry about the price, we worry about the technology, we worry about the uh, reader engagement, uh, and of course about the relationship with publishers. So that's, that's what we've been working on. Uh, we've launched in a few countries, I'll show you later. Uh, but again, it's another thing to measure. Okay? And that's something we are starting to measure. That's part of the challenges we have uh, in the following months. So my goal is today to talk about metrics. If we have time to talk about tools, as usual, Carmen, if, if I talk too much, just stop me. <laughs> uh, some conclusions, some discussion, and of course, I hope we fix it or something. That, that would be great. Yeah? It's a bit <laughs> uh, well, What I want to talk about, just to make sure we're on the same page, is about qualitative measurements. Uh, I'm not going to talk about things like qualitative landscape, UX quality. There are other people who know much more than, than me about, especially UX. So I'm going to talk about that. I want to talk about some of the financial metrics, which I think Francisco already mentioned, but he's, he's done the, the job there. So I'm going to talk about revenue, balance, farm rate, farm rate. Even though I will mention a few. Uh, metrics that are important, especially when you have a subscription service like uh, the one we have. Uh, I know you want to talk about all the possible metrics in the world. Since it's there, there are many sources. There are so many there. It doesn't make any sense for me to go all this by themselves. I'll show you some links where we can find all the metrics that exist, at least the standard metrics, and you do what you want with them. As I mentioned now, uh, for me it's more important to decide about which are the key metrics for you more than you know about all the possible metrics in the world. And uh, we have Google Analytics to do that, you know. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about metrics and startups. A lot of you know Dave McClure. I guess some of you will, some of you won't. Uh, Dave McClure is the founder of uh, 100 Startups. He's a startup accelerator in Mountain View, California. Um, and uh, if you have, I would say the same, but if, if you have watched this video, you can leave the house. You know, you already know everything I'm going to tell you, except for examples about 20%. This is a video I uh, recorded in a sitcom uh, week in 2009, but it's still quite relevant. And what he mentioned at that time and what he wrote about is basically it's become kind of the, 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 the base of what we can do that So I, I recommend this, uh, this, uh, this presentation. 
Also, if you are into subscription services, uh, SaaS services, uh, I also absolutely recommend this talk. The uh, demo first talk is quite generic, about, and I'll mention, I'll talk about that later. Um, Ryan Carson from Garsonify, uh, it's a design studio, uh, talks much more in detail about the metrics he's using for subscription services. And still, um, four years later, it's still absolutely relevant for uh, any subscription service that uh, are new. Actually, many of the metrics that he mentions there are also mentioned by a few uh, business venture capitalists in, in California, meaning these are the metrics I expect you to follow. Okay, if you don't have these metrics, go home, make it happen, and then come back. Okay, so again, uh, for me, it's one of the best presentations. And uh, in addition, he created a spreadsheet in Google uh, with all the main metrics and basically a business, pack, a business plan that you can create and you can copy. Uh, and basically, that was our first business plan in terms of subscription that we used and we updated with what we needed. But it's really, really, really uh, uh, recommended. And of course, if you really are into the metrics, read this book, Lean Analytics, and this read book, uh, this book, uh, Web Analytics from Alina Stauschik, which is kind of the guru in metrics, uh, web metrics. Those two books, the two books are quite good. This is quite new, uh, Lean Analytics. It has like uh, six months or eight months, something like that. Uh, have anyone read, uh, read any of those? Go with it. <laughs> okay. So, Demagor has a great thing that is, he's a great uh, entrepreneur and a, a great investor, and he also has no taste for presentations. So, this is, <laughs> this is an example of the types of slides he creates, but he has a way And it's pretty good is that right now we are all so much into creating great presentations with great images that now this is good. You know, this becomes something that people look at. Uh, what he did, so since I know it comes more from the presentations than the approach, I change it into this one. <laughs> um, so, when you create a startup, specifically a digital startup, um, at the end of the day, you follow a life cycle, right? I mean, uh, what you need to do at the beginning is to make yourself known, especially your website, your service, your Facebook fan page, whatever. Uh, that's what it's called. Uh, acquisition. That's the acquisition stage of the model that Sandema can create. Um, once you've been able to acquire customers, meaning they've gone to your website and they have a queue, okay, uh, then you'd like them to uh, be activated, meaning most of the times that they create a, you know, they, 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 they give you your uh, email address, for example. Something like that. Something from where you can follow up afterwards. Because it doesn't make any sense if he goes to the web page and then disappears. Okay, you want to have some point of contact with him or with him. After that, you need to retain the user. So it's great if he goes to your website, it's great if he or she uh, writes his or her uh, email address, uh, but if he doesn't go back again to your website, never again. It doesn't matter how many newsletters, how many emails you send, uh, it doesn't work. Okay? When I mean website, I mean apps, I mean whatever, it's your point of contact with the how you use it. Um, that's the retention part. I'll skip this one. Of course, at the end of the day, what you want to create is some revenue. Uh, you want somebody to get your email, their email, whatever, but you know, you want them to pay something for your services or for your product or whatever. Okay, that's quite obvious. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, uh, right now we're in a moment where you don't just need to create a viable product. If you are here, so probably most of you want to create a scalable product. You want to create a scalable business. Okay, you want to create, convert it into something that is more local, probably global, and that uh, you know it's very difficult to manage right now. And probably you're going to get a seed capital of a few thousand euro, uh, and they're going to get investors are going to ask you to uh, have you know. Uh, the leadership of, of your uh, product category. So you, you cannot spend much money in marketing. So that's why the referral part is quite important. This is also known as viral marketing, probably uh, that's uh, growth hacking. The idea of making your product grow as much as possible with as little money as is possible. And the only way to do that, that at least the experts have come up there with, is that if you like the product, to talk about the product to your friends, your friends talk about the product to your friends, and uh, you just quit. But that's a, that's a lie, and I'll show you that we tried that and it didn't work. Uh, but, uh, but at least that's what you have to try. And this is the referral part. Okay. So this is what uh, the Macron calls the R model, the metrics for pirates. You know, very, very ingenious. 
Uh, but the truth is that uh, it's very similar to other models. And in our case, in 24 symbols, we started to use it like a couple of years ago, a little bit more than that, two years and a half. And it, for us, it's, really, it's been really useful to organize what we are doing at this stage uh, of our lives. Okay? Um, because, of course, now I'm going to tell you about each of these stages and how and what metrics we use and what experiments we've done in each of these areas. Uh, but at once, at each stage of our lifetime, we don't focus on all of them. We just focus on one specific area. And we just focus, we just focus on one, on one, two, three, four metrics that are relevant for us. Just to give you a glimpse of what I'm going to tell you about, for many months, probably more than a year, we've been focusing on retention. Okay, we're going to focus on revenue and trade out, we're focusing on growth, but more than growth to have the users as active as possible. Okay? Right now, we are kind of moving towards revenue because we have investors, and as one of my partners said, show me the money, right? We need you know, people to show the money. So now we're starting to look at these metrics much more in detail that, than these others. For many, for a couple of years, we didn't even take care about these metrics, okay? Uh, we wanted to grow, and we wanted to increase our retention, but now, of course, things have changed, as you thought, and we need to focus on those metrics. That doesn't mean we are not going to take a look at these metrics here, but uh, this is what something I'm going to be taking a look at every single day, every week, every month. I, I don't care that much about how many users we have now. It's important, but I don't care that much. And that's important because if you just try to have a look at all the metrics in the world, you're not going to be able to take any decision. Okay, you need to focus on the metrics that are actionable for you at this specific moment. At least, this is how we do it. So let's talk about traffic metrics, the first uh, three uh, acquisition, activation, and application metrics. Uh, acquisition, as I mentioned, is how will people find your site. You know, that's the first thing. I mean, you create your great trust service. Oh, something like uh, you, you create your great service, your, your great app. What, how does it work? How will people start to, uh, to know about your service or your app? So what we did, here, I, I want to be very careful with this. I mean, this is how we did it, and this is how it worked for us. I'm not sure if this is the best way, or you know, I'm so open to having discussions afterwards, you know, about your experiences. But uh, what we did, and this is again, this this has to be big history. This is this was in 2010, 2011. Uh, what we did was we created a web page, we created a Facebook fan page, we created a Twitter account, and very simply, we asked the question. Would you like to have a Spotify for books? And um, this is now known as a discovery or something like that, right? In the new startup world, uh, I would say the same. Yeah, great. Uh, no, for us it was that we were uh, four friends in the 30, 30 something, okay? With uh, a wife, with kids, you know? We were not going to quit our company. <laughs> <laughs> to start a startup without knowing in advance that we had a little bit of possibilities for us. Okay? Now we're a customer discovery. That looks great. But for us, it was more than that. It was, you, know, <laughs> you know, I have a good job with a relatively good salary. I, I love this. This is a great idea, we think. But if people don't ask, if I ask, would you like sponsor for books? And know the answers? <laughs> okay. Um, the only thing with that is that. At that moment, it, it really worked pretty well. When we started to ask about, you know, what's, you know, would you like to have something like Spotify for books? People knew about Spotify already. 2010 was a big year year for for Spotify in Spain. So then people started saying, oh yeah, I mean, we'd really like to have Spotify for books. That would be really cool. Uh, then we started to move. We, we created a blog, we created a Twitter account, all that stuff, and then we had more and more followers and more and more fans in our page and we started to uh, write in our own blog and then suddenly some people this year, uh, some people started to talk about us in, in blogs and then in newspapers and we started to see that there was lots of interest about that. That was kind of the initial thing about this might work. Okay? And then we started to see, of course I'll show you later, that people were starting to come into our website from different places, not only in Spain. But it showed some traction from that position standpoint. We have you we have visits. We didn't have users because we didn't have a product at the beginning. But we have uh, visits, we had uh, followers, we had fans. That allowed us to start thinking, oh, this would be, this would be good. Okay? I'll, I'll talk about, a little bit about that later. Uh, we got an acquisition, okay? So 
uh, I'll go forward in a bit. So we already have the products, uh, we got some investments. Okay, so how do we make ourselves more known? Okay, so we sell books, right? Or it's not exactly we sell, it's a subscription service, but we want people to read our books. So we want people to be able to find our books when they're trying to find something. <coughs> So one uh, interesting thing we did was that uh, we created uh, uh, author, publisher, and book pages that were available uh, with a public URL. Okay. So it's what we did was basically organic positioning for each of those pages. Automatically, whenever we get a contact with a publisher, then the publisher page would be automatically created. This is an example uh, with a logo, with some description of the, of the publisher, and then with all the books that we have in our service and of course with all, every single possibility uh, that we can for people to share at this page. Uh, we do lots of SEO and this enabled us to have good results. For example, the best result for us is that for many of the books we have, uh, if you look for this, if you search for that uh, book in Google, uh, our page is going to be on top uh, of the publisher's official page. Okay, So that was good for us because at the beginning nobody knew, even now, I mean, we're not Amazon. So people didn't doesn't really know who we are. So that when they're looking to read that specific book, they're gonna find a 24 signals page and say, well, what's this? And they're gonna click. Okay, and that has to work. I mean that, that worked really well at the beginning and it still, still works. Because we are positioning what people are trying to find the books, which is on Google most of the times. So Amazon and Google. We we were not able to have Google at Amazon, so so we did that with Google. Okay. As I mentioned before, uh, as we start to do this, uh, uh, one thing that happened, and I think that this can be repeatable in, in many cases, is that you have to be aware that uh, uh, a journalist need news. Okay? They need news, news pieces. And most of the time, the journalists in El País, in El Mundo, in wherever, they need news. Uh, so what happened with us is that as, as soon as we started to make some noise with some bloggers, specific, I mean, specialized bloggers, or publisher bloggers, you know, nothing, nothing huge, not tech crunch or anything like that, suddenly people started to Journalists started to talk to us. Sometimes they called us, and sometimes they just talked about us. Okay? And um, the, the main reason, I mean, there are many reasons, I hope, but uh, one of the main reasons was the exploited type of books. Uh, so if, when you go to, uh, to find an investor, uh, for example, there's some a few quite important investors in the UK that says that uh, they don't like companies that say we are the XX for YY. Okay? And I say, I don't know. I mean, it worked so well. You know, my, my, I, have, I don't have a 30 second pitch, I have a 3 second pitch. We are exploited at four books. Period. Thanks. Bye. You know, uh, and it works. And for us, it was really interesting for the journalist. I mean, it was like, oh, Spotify, books. Ah, there's a story, man. Let's talk about that. Okay? And, and it really worked. That well. um, this is pretty old, but we were able to be in places we, we didn't think we would be. I mean, I'm pretty proud, for example, of being at the New York. I mean, for me, it was like, oh, my God. You know, need to be in the New York. <laughs> you know, but you know uh, that's how it worked for us. Uh, I am I'm not sure it will work for all of you, but I guess, uh, for example, right now it's true that Spotify for books goes with that everywhere, and maybe now we would like to have this Spotify for books slogan because now we are changing a little bit. Uh, but I don't regret any single minute of being Spotify for books. Uh, even now, when we are in Spain, we are in some other countries, but for example, we are not in the US. And uh, there are a couple of competitors in the US that have actually raised a lot of money. Uh, they still invite us to events in the US uh, as the granddaddy of the, of the subscription services for books. And this is because of, because of the Spotify for books. So, I mean, don't be afraid of uh, forcing the limits. About, uh, for example, the first couple of months, we were kind of afraid saying, oh my god, Spotify is going to find out and they're going to be angry at us. And, you know, <laughs> It happen, you know, it's not at all. Okay. Another way to, uh, to get a position, I always say the same. Social networks are great, social media, whatever. If you can be on TV, be on TV. Okay. <laughs> I'll, show you, I'll show you an example and a counter example. And this is the example. These were 15 seconds in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the main uh, news broadcast in the Plasma BTS, the Uno, uh, when two of my partners were not even talking about 24 percent we're talking about something else. I honestly forgot about what it was about, but he just said, you know, my one of my partners was speaking, and he said, I told him this, found the of 24 single. And suddenly, this is what happens. You know, it goes down very quickly, but you know, it, it, was, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. 
and study until possible for that. The current sample is uh, about one year, a little bit more than a year. We were uh, pulled by a TV program saying we wanted to participate in our TV program called Polygon Blended, which you haven't probably watched out because uh, they promised us to be on time time and they did move it to after midnight. <laughs> so <laughs> probably that's the reason why I'm going to talk about this. So we were kind of, uh, this was a very difficult moment for us because we were in the moment of raising the air rounds. Uh, again, in May we, we signed an air round of 2 million euros here in Spain. We were negotiating the contract at that time. So somebody from the TV coming and saying, why don't you come here and spend seven weeks of your time, be recorded about absolutely everything you do, was, you know, this is, I, I'm not sure. But of course they said, prime time, 2.5 million uh, minimum audience. How much does it cost for me to get the 2.5 uh, million people audience? So we said, okay, let's do it. Uh, my partner at all basically disappeared for seven weeks because uh, it, it was a reality show as well, so they sent it to different places in Spain where they had, he had to cut wood, uh, to sell roses, <laughs> to do all that kind of important things for a startup entrepreneur, you know, sell roses. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we were like, this is going to work. Well, it worked the first day. Uh, because it was like, uh, the program was broadcast about 11.30 p.m., so it was kind of good. Uh, but as you can see here, I uh, didn't really work for the rest of the program. It was 12.30 a.m. Basically, the only people who were watching this program were the freaks like you <laughs> uh, that already knew about the tables. <laughs> so uh, it didn't really work. And, and in terms of experience, it was great. Uh, but you know, it takes a lot of time. So in personal experience, great, great experience. We had lots of fun. Business experience. The only good thing, I always say the same, the only great thing we had is that uh, there was a software engineer calling us and saying, I watched, I saw you on the TV program, here you have a resume, great, he's on the team. You know, so that's great. But uh, it was lots of work for the results. Okay, so take, take, take care of I mean, This is a different kind of being on TV. You're not, you know, you're not in a, in a major team where you're spending seven, seven weeks of your time uh, here, especially in the moment that was quite difficult. Okay. Um, other thing that worked very well for us is videos. Videos right now are quite you know, expensive. Even professional companies can make great videos for one, two thousand euro. It might be a lot of money for some of you, of course. But even if you do it yourself, uh, they, they, for, at least for us, it's worked pretty well. It, was, it's worked, it worked pretty well for, for us when we're looking for investments, for users, for partners, for many different uh, reasons. So I, I like it. We've done three videos until now. And, all of them have worked for you if you want. Well, regarding metrics, so, so if we do this action, but regarding metrics, we need to know if everything is working. So the typical thing people do is check the number of metrics. I guess most of you already use Google Analytics, for example. I'll talk about this later, but free tool, easy to set up, uh, go to number of visits, uh, how many visits you have. Uh, the problem with the number of visits or the number of pages uh, page views is that they are known as uh, vanity metrics. I don't know if you've heard about the concept. Uh, it's a great metric to talk to investors about. So I already have 500,000 visits per day or things like that. Oh, that's great. But then usually smart investors and smart people start to ask questions. So what's the bounce rate? Okay. The bounce rate, uh, I love this definition, is the number, the percentage of people that go to your page you a <laughs> right? Uh, if your bounce rate is 5%, 6%, great job. Okay. If it's 10%, good job. On top of 10%, start to think about whether one, you're not doing a good marketing job, and what you are making is your users, the wrong kind of user going to your page. So of course, I mean, oh, I thought you were selling cars and you sell diapers. But oh, listen, are you? That's the first thing. The second thing is that, okay, you've done your marketing job very well, then how do your web page success? Okay, so you have a good amount of people, the amount, the right amount of people, they get to your page and they leave. In five seconds, something's wrong with your technical or your UX experience in, in, in your page. So, very important, take a look at your bounce rate. But that's one of the things that we say here in the content design. And uh, always segments, again, 
I have 500,000 visits per day, whatever, because I'm, you know, what do you do? I sell diapers in Spain. Okay, where do your customers, your, your visitors come from? Oh, 55% come from Mexico. Oh, okay, and how is the percentage in Spain? 2%. I'm exaggerating, of course, but something's wrong. I mean, yeah, you have 500,000 wrong visitors. Okay, so just work on maybe your marketing is wrong, or maybe you're finding a new business area. Oh, people are coming from Mexico. This is what's happening to us right now. I mean, I'm looking there because Isabel works for us, <laughs> with us, right? Better uh, say. And, and uh, we find we found suddenly a while ago that you know, right now at least I think half of our registration registration users come from Mexico. We didn't do any marketing approach. There's an opportunity there. I mean, you know, it's clear there is an opportunity. We found it this way, not just looking at we have five hundred thousand users or whatever. Okay. Activation: How sticky is your site? Okay, you are doing a great job with your community manager, whatever you use, and, and, and you're making your uh, people actually get to your page. But you need to get, you know, activate your people to get people to actually know, uh, want to know more about you. And uh, typically, the normal things to make people uh, subscribe or register to your website. Okay, of your app, you know, provide the email address or something similar, like phone number in just some cases. Um, so, so this is what we did at the beginning. I mean, it was clear for us that we wanted to uh, get people to give us our their, their email address. Um, so this is the first version that we, one of the first versions we created our web page. For us, it was very clear. Um, we are going to talk about what we are. Very simple. We are going to put some examples about the books we have. And we're going to ask people to register. Uh, we committed two mistakes. Yeah. The first mistake is that this is not enough for something to, for somebody to register into a website like ours. We're talking about books. Uh, people want to browse books. They are very used to browsing books. They go to Amazon, they go to Barnes and Noble, they go to the Court US, and they browse books. At least the cover, at least the sign up system. <coughs> okay? We weren't given this opportunity here. Okay, we were just assuming that people knew who we were. Uh, and you know, people don't know what 24 symbols is, period. Okay, so that was the first mistake. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how we fix it. Uh, uh, the second mistake was that uh, we did something good. We created a signing and create an account uh, option as soon as possible, perfect. Uh, you enter your email, you create a password, you uh, create an account. And when you create an account, then we have an intermediate page asking for additional information. We are all into analytics in 24 symbols, so we thought, okay, if I'm able to know about the gender and about the age of the user, then I can provide better recommendations, you know, better things, you know, better books. Uh, well, what we didn't expect, we expect that some people wouldn't like to provide that information. What we didn't expect is that it was like 85% of the people didn't want to provide that information. So we were losing most of our users in the intermediate page, okay? In the page where even even though it was it was not mandatory, okay? It was not mandatory. You could just skip the, the step, but people were just quitting at that moment where they were not finalizing the registration. Uh, so that wasn't good for us. So we decided that it would be a one-step process, okay? You create an account, email, password, boom, join. And in the second stage, we would ask. Can we ask the user to provide that information if they can be wanted to give it to us? Um, what we found is that, okay, right now we don't know the age or the gender of many of our users, but since we have already quite a few users, all the decisions we can make right now are still statistically significant. Because some of them are providing that information, some of them provide that information directly from Facebook. So uh, still it works for us. So we know that. As approximately that 65, 60% of our users are female. Okay? It's not that every single one of them we know where it's female or not, but we have enough users that provide information that we can we can know about that and we can take decisions about that. Romans, for example, works pretty well. Yeah? Right? Um, yeah. So this is what we did to solve the other issue, uh, which was to create uh, to basically copy interest. Okay, if you know interest uh, is um, gonna become the standard for UX design. So we didn't decide the same. I mean, interest is features, uh, in books is covers. Uh, so we create an infinite scrolling. You don't need to register to actually start taking a look at our books. 
clicking on them, checking the synopsis, okay? If you want to read them, you need to register, of course, but before that, it works pretty well. Okay? If you need to store it again in our apps, in the, in the services, in the web service as well, so you can keep on going down and down and down and down and down and you have access to all the tools that we have. First are the new releases, then it's a sensitivity process, so it shows whatever book that works as well very well. And this is the result. This is the average time per page, average time of session before and after the change. It went from 1 minute to 5 to 4 to 4 45 minutes. So the user spends an average of 4 minutes 45 seconds in their first session on the page. What was the change? Yeah, going from here, okay, register, uh, you, have, you, you only have some basic information to, man, spend time here. You know, you cannot do it here, you have to register, but other than that, check the covers, check the synopsis, check the comments from the users, you know, do check the categories here, the publishers, the authors, the most popular, the most popular, and it went again from 125 to 445, and it hasn't gone down much from there. What are you are you doing right now with these cookies that that you are not allowed to track data before you user agrees about this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are accepting the cookie policies. Uh, blah, 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 blah. We, we 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 try to avoid it for a long time until somebody said to do it now. You're going to do it. It's a nightmare. It's stupid. Uh, I understand it. I mean, I understand the. The protection of the user. I don't understand this specific question. I, I probably you've heard some tweets about you know hereby you know this tweet I accept every single cookie in the world. <laughs> I don't want to know anything else about cookies. That's what. We do. Yeah. And we have a cookie policy there somewhere. <laughs> you know when well, something is just for something is just for this is not just for for anyone. So, it, so this was pretty well. Uh, it could have. You know, work out. Okay, we, we, this was a bet, but it worked pretty well. Uh, so always be thinking about, and the metrics were very useful for that. I mean, thinking about what's the actual response of your users and how you can improve. Test, 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 test. Some things work, some things don't work out. Okay. Um, metrics for uh, activation um, timings, of course, that's the great, uh, the best. Uh, the best metrics for early stage startups when you go talk to investors is great to show that you have again 50,000 users, raise the users, 60,000, whatever. Um, but even if you do that and you have a great slide showing this, you know, puppy stick growth or whatever like you want to do, uh, so at least internally measure the churn as well. The churn technically is a little bit different. Churn is when a people is when somebody is a subscriber and somebody cancels a subscription. That's the so the, the charm percentage is how many for a month, for example, is how many of your active of your of your registrations have cancelled uh, this subscription. But the, the truth is that nobody does that. How many of you have cancelled a subscription lately? You know, you just don't use the service anymore, right? Um, so charm didn't work because we had a 0 0.0001 percent of charm. Great. Right? Uh, what we measure is the number of active users. Okay, so we don't measure, I mean, we, we for example, now we have uh, close to 600,000 uh, recent users, great, but we measure 100 are active, and we define what active is. For us, it's somebody that opens a book at least once a month. Okay, it's not some, somebody who, somebody, somebody who goes into the web page, we don't care about that. We are measuring whoever opens a page of a book, and that's an active uh, user for us. And then we see that we have a 50%, 70%, whatever percentage uh, of active users, uh, which means that, okay, we have 600 percent users, but not all of them are reading. Okay, that lowers our ego a little bit, which is always good. Okay. Uh, we don't use them, but these are typically useful for you. Recency, uh, the time since users did something meaningful that can be great for you in some cases. Uh, time per page, time on site, so let me show you some, uh, one example of that. Okay. Again, um, I'll, I'll talk about this once and again. I don't care about the, I don't care much about the standard metrics. I care about the metrics that are important for me. Okay. 
Uh, for mutation, I mean, for activation, of course, we reach deals with partners, for example, with Katsui. That's for pretty well because people who buy an iPad or, an iPod or, or, a, or a Mac, they get a three month uh, premium uh, subscription for free. So that actually helps people to, uh, well, to, to test the service a little bit. And it goes with every iPad and every Mac in itself, so by that it's in fact in. So that, that, that's a good partnership. And this is one of the things that, you know, we were very small, that's when it's quite big in Spain. And we kind of thought, well, what about this? And they said, great, this is exactly what we're looking for. So in two days, they did all the design. So sometimes, even you you want to have to bigger guys, these guys are actually looking for something like, like what you offer. Uh, the, the reason is that they have started to offer the same uh, the same promotion for Wacky, you know, Wacky the team, the, the, the video streaming, the movie streaming. So it was great for them to offer Wacky and offer three for singles. It was a very cultural way of uh, engaging their the users, the customers. And other way to engage users is what we're doing now. Uh, we're reaching deals, as I mentioned, with mobile carriers. Uh, so right now we have 24 symbols, but we already have a uh, service in Russia with a mobile carrier, uh, the second one in Russia. And we launched in Guatemala, uh, uh, again, with, with a deal that will involve uh, other five uh, countries in Latin America. In these cases, it's a white label, so that means it's not 24 symbols, it's B-line books, it's smart books. Uh, but this is our technology, is our publisher relations, our publisher contracts. We do everything except for the access to the users that goes through the carry. Okay? Another way to uh, get you know what we want in these first two areas, right? Which is to grow our user base. It's true that this is not exactly our user base, it's true, it's a different kind of user, it belongs to the to the carrier, but it allows us to grow and monetize, which is also quite important for us as international people. Okay. Good by right now? Yeah? Okay, no. <laughs> uh, let's go to retention. Why do users come back? Well, the, the people forget, forget about your app, forget about your service because like, there's so many apps and services that uh, you need something to remind them. Okay? Uh, the typical thing is using newsletters. Once you have the uh, email or if you have the phone number with SMS or something like that, that typically is the email. Then you can use that to remind the user that I'm here. Remember me? Yeah. So this we did well. We did bad at the beginning. Was that, uh, and this is not the worst example to be honest. We didn't. We weren't very good at uh, sending newsletters. We did two things bad. One was that they were too uh, obvious. So it was quite selling the service. You know, we have a new app, or, or please subscribe, or you know things like that. Uh, people don't like that too much. They're used to, you know, you know that you receive thousands, you know, tens, tens of emails like that every day. The other thing that we didn't do very well is that uh, at the beginning we, we did uh, 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 mail marketing. So we used MailChimp and uh, we said, okay, so we have at that time 50,000 users, registered users, so they like it, they like us, they love us. So we're going to send 50,000 emails. And most, you know, many of them mark the email as a spam. Okay? Uh, because even if somebody has registered to your site, that doesn't mean he loves you or nothing like that. I mean, maybe he, didn't, he didn't even doesn't remember how who you are. Uh, so you may change a warned us, okay, this is the last time, and you're blocked for the next time. So since then, we segment the email marketing a lot. You know, uh, to the active users, to active users in Spanish, active users in English. Uh, it's cheaper, of course. But it's also safe. Okay. For that, you need to have a good, you know, good database so you can segment your user uh, whenever you need. Like that. Good recommendation. We were in trouble for a week uh, when Melchin said, mm -hmm. "No, no, must that." Okay. And then of course we started to improve uh, our newsletters. Um, it improved basically because we started to think that this was important, and we outsourced some of the creativity parts. Uh, you cannot deal with everything. So right now, the creativity part is done in conjunction with another, with another company, and then we do the design. We still do all the designs. So the, 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 that company doesn't do the design. We do it. And for example, uh, we have mentioned this one. This worked pretty well. What happens in 24 symbols stays in 24 symbols for erotic and romance uh, novels. That worked really well. I was very fun. Uh, and uh, the other one that worked pretty well is this one, which is the 24 Sutra. Okay, 24 positions to read in a tablet. And it worked so well 
uh, that now we created posters and we're giving in English, in French, in Italian, and in Spanish. Uh, I think people just love it. I mean, you made uh, uh, a publisher from Bloodbury, which is one of the key publishers in the UK. I gave one to, to her and basically he sent he me a picture. I need to share that with you guys. He sent me a picture with, you know, this is my office and here I have uh, the poster on the wall. And it was like, Bloodbury, our picture on the wall. On the wall. <laughs> so, of course, sometimes it doesn't work. I mean, we, we have a promotional campaign every 15, 20 days. Many of them don't work very well. Very well. But sometimes it does. This works. I mean, and this enables the retention, enables the percent of people who open the email and who go back to the uh, site. And you know, this is what we need here. We still need to improve. I'm pretty sure there are better examples than our company on how to do things. But we've improved quite a, quite, quite a lot since last year. All we need to increase retention is our Facebook fan page. So at the beginning, our Facebook fan page was a place to talk about everything. That's how here we are. This is our app, our app we are. Little by little, yes. <laughs> little by little, um, we converted it into a place for book lovers. So now we have people in the company who come from the publishing industry who actually talk about books, you know, the books we have, of course. And that uh, they try to engage the users so they comment, they, you know, they, they, you know, they, they write comments here on Facebook, things like that. We try to create a community of book lovers. I uh, believe that's the base of our potential success in the future. Okay, so Twitter is is, is something is like a mixture. We do everything. We talk about whatever we want. Uh, good luck in New York, my friend. We like that. But here we are kind of very strict. Um, basically, there's no promotions here except for a few ones. Most of the messages are uh, are about books, and it's uh, one post a day or no, three, I think three posts per week right now, uh, done by our team. Regarding retention, uh, the metrics that you can find on Google Analytics, things like that, are these ones number of unique and returning visitors, visits over time, average session time, uh, we don't use any of them. We decided that retention was so important for us that we were to measure our own metrics ourselves. We don't use Google Analytics from here on. Okay? We use our own uh, metrics. Uh, we uh, store the information in our database and then we create our own metrics to make sure we understand the behavior of our users. Uh, this is one that we use. Uh, I don't know if you know this one. Is the, it's called stickiness adherence. Uh, basically, is uh, the ratio between the daily or weekly active users divided by uh, the number of monthly active active users. So, just to put an example, in, uh, the numbers might be a little bit wrong, but I think they're quite correct. Uh, Facebook has a DAO uh, by amount of 0 0.5. That means that out of the uh, all of monthly active users that they have, uh, every user by average connects once every two days. That's absolutely huge. Uh, WhatsApp has a 0 0.78 right now. Okay. More than three quarters of all the WhatsApp users, active users, connect every single day. Which is, well, that's the reason why they were acquired. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> Right. Uh, for example, I believe I'm mean, wrong here. I think Amazon has a wow divided by mao of zero point. No, no. Amazon has a dao divided by mao of zero point zero point three eight, which is great for e-commerce. You know, you know, one third of the people are coming every single day. Uh, we had I haven't seen this for a while, but we had a wow divided by mao of zero zero point three uh, a few months ago. Which was also quite uh, but you know, to thank you very much. And also, uh, yeah, sorry, so, so, do, do you have I would, like a threshold uh, for the action to count or just to, to be there to see that? Uh, the problem is that who's defined the threshold? The threshold? Like within the book or? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Can you repeat the question? Count uh, the daily. Active user, yeah, is just to log in or is to do something like that? I'm going to go read a page. Okay. It has to come in for us. Everything saying active means opening a page. Uh, so I don't count uh, whoever goes to our website and signs in and browses the catalog and goes back. That's not an active user for me. It has to open a, a page of a book. Mm -hmm. 
Also, other things, uh, for example, those are the, has been the, the most critical ones are the domain specific ones. These are not metrics you will find in your uh, books or anything like that. These are the ones that we needed. Number of readers, not users, readers. Again, people who open you know, the book, this page. Uh, and more specifically, this is the one that the ones that we've been using for a while. Number of pages read per active reader per month, and number of pages read per a user per month. Okay. That for us was the key metric for retention. So you can have, in our case, 85% of active users. But this, if the number of the average number of pages read per active user per month is one, it doesn't work. You know, you, you only have people who read one page. We don't want that, we want readers. So for us, and this is pretty old that I always forget to, to uh, grade it, but this is what we're looking at. I mean, uh, per active user, people who didn't pay it. Just registered, uh, we had an average of like 100 pages uh, per, per month. Okay, which was a little bit, and it still is a little bit lower than what we want because we want people to read a little bit more than a, a book per month. And for that, we need people to read about 260, 170 pages. Okay, so we are still, we still haven't got there. So we are still working on improving this. But this gives us the information. Okay, this is the average number of pages that were a page. It says 1,200 pages. What, what this tells me, and this still tells us, is that we only have uh, early authors. Okay? We have only have book eaters. You know, people will say, well, 60 euro a year and I can read every single book? That's great. I read 10 books uh, a week. So that's perfect for me. Okay? Uh, we, I mean, this has to go down as we grow our uh, AD service, because it's not best for How many pages can a non-paid user uh, read? No, I don't think I understand. Um, no, it, it's not, there's no limit. You can read uh, whatever you want. The limit is that for a non-paid yeah, yeah. For a, for a registered user, non-paid user, the limit is that they don't have access to all the data. But you always have books that are commercial and are for free for you, and you can you don't have to limit. Okay, so that's the thing. I mean, we have uh, outlier, outliers here. Uh, last time I checked, there was a couple of guys who were reading like twenty thousand pages a month. Probably, uh, but probably, probably, you know, you know, I, it's hard for me to, to see someone reading twenty thousand pages a month. You know. I'm reading and eating at the same time. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's possible. Uh, so we, we, we try to solve those problems. We don't have many, but of course you see some outliers there. Again, metrics help you to find out that something's going wrong. <coughs> In some cases, we can block those users if, if we see that. That's, that's a problem. Okay. Other ways to increase retention is uh, this Batamo card place that will go past releases for users to become data librarians. Again, this is also related to, to referral, I'll mention that later. Uh, but if we can make people create their own bookshelves instead of 24 singles, start to curate books, and uh, since we enable those bookshelves to be followed by others, then those users become digital librarians, they like to have many users, many followers, and they start to care about the books that we have in 24 singles. So that enables us to grow our user base. This is something we're starting to experiment. Uh, we don't have uh, still lots of results, but uh, we're going to be uh, pushing that in the, in the near future. Oh, so far so good. Yeah, yeah I'm just finishing across. <laughs> Social metrics, do people talk about your site? Uh, no, no. This is obvious for you, I guess. Uh, you need to be aware that most of your users are not as visitors. In our case, I just want to read books. Some of your users are money contributors that are going to like your book or comment about your book or whatever. And just a small percentage, typically less than 1%, are going to be distributors. They are going to be sharing uh, love about your product. Okay? But the thing is that um, in order to increase this percentage, you need to provide ways for the users to share that love as much as you can. So that's, that's what we've done. Uh, basically, you can share, as I mentioned that before, you can share the author page, the publisher page, a book page, 
if you like a specific uh, passage of your book, you can share it on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, you can share the cover in plenty of interest. Uh, again, you can create your bookshops. You can share those bookshops. You can have people follow your bookshops. You can, you know, everything that we could think of can be shared in 20%. But it's a hard work. And actually, for example, in some of our apps, we still don't have all the functionality to develop. Uh, but this is basically, and actually, we're going to be increasing that in the following months even much more. Than that. Uh, every single opportunity that a user has to share your content, to share your whatever you have your app, you do it. And this is product based. You have to implement it in your uh, internet, on your service. An example, so I'll share the slides so you have all those things that I'm speaking. But basically, I already spoke about that. How do we measure this part, this sharing part? Uh, there are many metrics, of course, number of comments, number of shares, all that stuff. Um, I like this variety, uh, the, 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 the K factor. I don't know if you've heard about the K factor, probably some of you have. The single K factor is the amplification rate uh, multiplied by the conversion rate. So basically, right now, I tell you, hey guys, you know, please, now go home and send an email to all your friends and tell them to join 24 7. Okay, and let's say that all of you do that. Okay, then I have a great amplification rate. Okay, because I'm giving you one request, and suddenly you are doing all that for me because you, know, you love the part and you love me. And, you know. But the thing is that what, what happens is that what's going to happen with your friends? Are they going to raise the additional percentage? Because it's, if they do, that becomes a big viral. But if they don't, okay, if they don't do anything at all, if they say, thanks, yeah, yeah, every, every word that you say is saying, or every stuff that is here, you know, mm -hmm. uh, then the conversion rate goes down and they don't get the viral part. The viral factor is a formula. If you get a K factor bigger than one, that means that you have growth. If it's, let's say, uh, bigger than, than one with four, then you start to have a viral a growth, meaning that uh, suddenly you're going to see an a exponential growth of your user process or whatever it is. If it's a process, it's a payment, whatever. It's a typical example is Dropbox. Dropbox growth uh, grew exponentially. WhatsApp, WhatsApp is another example. So we said, uh, let's do it. You know, we're going to be in uh, Spoiler, we didn't want it. Uh, <laughs> so we created a member, get member approach. Basically, it's okay. If you are using 24 symbols and you invite your friends in the gym, you know, 24 symbols by email, by Twitter, by whatever, if 10 of them register to 24 symbols, you get one premium month for free. If 20 of them register, you get three months for free. If 30 of them register, then you get one year for free. So, we started to take a look. First day or two, the advice the key factor was like, I don't know, four point something. It was like, oh my god, this is going to be awesome. So, how many million users are we going to have in two days? Uh, first day, second day. Ah, I'm scared. Okay, first learning out uh, here, virality doesn't work by itself. Uh, there are many wrong uh, articles on the net about how Dropbox, you know, do automatically your WhatsApp. You need to work so hard to make this work. You need to remind the users to work with them, to say thanks, to say so many things that we didn't do at that time that didn't work. Okay? We tried a few times later on, it didn't work. Now we're going to try to do it later in, you know, after the summer to see how we can make it work this time because we want, now we are going to want to grow a little bit more. Uh, so we'll see. But it's very difficult. So read every single book. Be quite but you need to experiment and hopefully for some of you will work properly. Uh, for us, it hasn't. We had kind of a geometric work, growth, not a, not a exponential growth, which is good, but not what we expect. Okay, and uh, just to finish business metrics, uh, uh, great experience, you know, having a startup, how do you make money? Uh, well, we're in the process of starting to make some money. Uh, let's keep this, uh, we have some business models here. Uh, if you are interested in terms of later. Um, again, there are some good, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, some good uh, uh, assets that you can take a look at. First of all, for, again, for rate of metrics, what Francisco said before is, is what you need to know. I'm just going to focus on subscription services, okay? Uh, because this is what I'm going to be focusing more. Version uh, 5, I already told you about that. I believe this is the QR code for the uh, spreadsheet I mentioned before. And uh, Decimer, this is a good document about, De Decimer is, is a very well-known venture capitalist uh, in, in California and Europe as well. 
Um, basically, they are very focused on cloud and SaaS services. And they've written a few, book a few uh, white papers about what they expect from the uh, companies they look at if they want to be invested on. Uh, take a look at that. Basically, it's, uh, I'll mention that in a minute, but they show some very interesting metrics that you should follow. Um, actually, they tell you, uh, I'll mention that again in a minute, uh, some values that if you are able to go to get that value, you should talk to them immediately because that means they, they would be interested in investing. Okay. Um, the three main metrics, uh, sorry Francisco, have you mentioned any of these? Mm -hmm. Life temperature. Life temperature, okay, then I'll go. <coughs> CLRR, uh, life temperature and CSDR. So, first, it's a stupid thing, but what you need to know, uh, you want your conversion rate to grow while your churn, the number of people who cancel your subscription goes down. That's pretty obvious. But uh, again, the vanity metrics forget about this. And they just focus on, you see how much money you are making? Yeah, how much? How many people are getting pissed off at your service and canceling your subscription? You need to take a look at that as well. Um, the first uh, metric is CNRR. Simply the name is you know, committed monthly review revenue. Well, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit more complex than this. But basically, it's how much money you are making every month due to subscriptions. You guys have to service how much money you're making from the existing uh, subscriptions you have from previous months, plus uh, people who are renewing, plus the new accounts that you have this month, less the chunk. Okay? When I, when I see it this way, it seems stupid. I mean, how should people worry about this? And, you know, everyone should have this metric ready. Well, we didn't, you know, when we saw this. We didn't have this. We just know how much money we were making. Like we didn't have no we have no idea about the churn, the difference between new accounts and existing accounts. We weren't measuring that. And then I found that many people are doing exactly the same mistake that we did for the same. And this is very useful and very simple to create. I mean this is this is this is quite obvious. I mean you, you should have this in your in your database. Uh, so it became quite useful for us. Like uh, uh, for this was mentioned about this, uh, just this as to give example, as I will say, this is a new product that I found years ago about uh, the average lifetime value of a Starbucks. Fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, well, since I'm a Starbucks, uh, Starbucks customer, I say that's quite true. <laughs> uh, so they can spend quite a lot of money marketing because they're going to get lots of money from the uh, from the Starbucks uh, customers. Okay. And, the right time value is great, uh, but you need to take into account the customer acquisition cost as well. Uh, basically, it's what the name says is how much it takes you to acquire a customer. Okay? Uh, typically, it's the gross margin per customer uh, that you get divided by the sales, marketing cost. This is a little more difficult to, uh, difficult to formula because you have to decide what goes to uh, sales and marketing cost per customer. So you need to make a decision generally about, you know, out of all. Or, let me give you an example. We, ex we started to uh, put money into marketing just a couple of months ago. Since uh, until then, we had spent zero euro marketing. Okay? So if I just say that, this is zero, so my CAC ratio uh, is zero. <coughs> uh, uh, what? What? The interface would be zero. Uh, but that's not true because we've been you know, working so hard on getting customers that you need to put some 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 value there. Okay, so that, that that's the point. Uh, what a customer says is that if you get a value of, uh, lower than one third, that means that basically means that it takes you three years to recover uh, the investment you made on your customer. Basically, you're doing bad stuff. You know, uh, you're doing something really wrong with your sales model. If your CAC is bigger than one, that means that uh, you are um, recovering the investment cost per customer in less than a year. What customer says is, invest more money. You are doing great. So put more money on marketing because you are getting a good marketing cost. And it doesn't say here, but basically they say, call us immediately. Okay? Because we're interested uh, on investment. And why? Because the average, uh, the average ratio of SaaS companies for customer portfolio is 0.6. So it's really hard uh, to recover the investment from your uh, subscribers uh, just based on your lifetime value. Okay. 
The, the gross margin per customer and the sales cost per customer in this case would be per year. I mean, uh, yeah, so it can be, uh, for example, we look per quarter. Okay, the, 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 the formula we use, uh, we, we typically use. It can be per year, per month, whatever you want to measure. In our case, we use the, the basic formula we took it from, that's uh, per quarter. In that case, uh, it would mean that it would take three quarters to get the thing that's done. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but a good point because I know something about uh, where I'm taking, I'm taking the numbers from. Yeah, and I, I want to be clear. I, I mentioned that at the beginning, but this is a little bit more complex. This formula, okay? So if you want to, okay, if you want to go to talk to Bessemer because you have a CSC bigger than one, make sure that you're using the formula that Bessemer gives you. Okay, because uh, uh, this is just a, a simplification of the formula. It's a little bit more complex than than because you know, it, makes, it makes it more easy. Right? Um, again, well. Like that value should again go up as the CSC at least it's maintained or going a bit down. Okay, so this is another thing that you should take into account. But big investors like Western, like Passion, like uh, or Index and things, they expect the lifetime value to be at least three times the CSC. Okay, the customer acquisition cost. Uh, they want to be to see growth. Again, they didn't want they didn't want to invest on uh, we, <laughs> um, we need to invest on people and not just on viable startups but on scalable startups. So people can start that are going to grow. Okay? But, um, uh, it's, it is because of that. Is that a the underlying Yeah, no, it's just, uh, no, it's not for things, it's for you. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking, I'm talking about like, oh my god. Um, no? Oh, yeah? Okay. I don't know how to take that. <laughs> okay, so again, these are uh, the standard metrics, but we also use our own metrics, as you saw. Um, well, I'm going to talk just about the premium model that we use to uh, right now to models, but I'm going to just mention this one for this example. The premium model is basically you know what premium model is, but basically you can register for free, you have some invitations from the books you can read or how you can read, and if you want to read more books, to read outline, to do other things, then you have to pay, okay, every month, every quarter, or every year. So obviously, one very interesting metric for us is the conversion rate. That's, that's quite obvious, okay? Um, which is the time that takes uh, the percentage of users that uh, convert into premium. But we also mentioned, uh, we also mentioned, uh, and I'm talking about that in the past, but uh, other things, which is, for example, the time it takes for an average user to become premium. Okay? Right now, it's basically, it's not statistically significant because, again, we haven't focused on uh, getting paid users yet uh, in, the, in this case. But so the conversion rate is pretty, pretty low. Okay? It's very low. It's not what we uh, want to have. But this was, for example, was very interesting for us. Um, it seems that the average uh, time of conversion in Spotify is a month or two. Okay? Why? Because you test Spotify, all the people who convert. So it's not that on average people who register convert in one month, but for the people who convert, they typically convert in one or two months. The reason is quite simple once you think about it, is that you know you very quickly know if Spotify is for you or not. Okay, you look for Bruce Springsteen, Bubbleland, or Lady Gaga, and you say, it's for me, you know, okay, great babies, and it works. In our case, uh, for those, it was more than six months. But that makes sense, well. why? Because people need to read a few books uh, to make sure they like our service. And people read books in time, you know, it's not like listening to one Lady Gaga song. They want to see the experiences with what they want to see. And then you finally see, ah, there are those books, and there are over 12, 14, 15 books in 24 seconds. So I can subscribe. The good thing, the good news about the, the small number of premium uh, users we have is that most of the subscribers were a one year subscriber. So they don't pay for a month, they pay for three months. Once they find that you know we have the books they like, you know, it's 60 bucks a year a year. Much you know, five, five euro a month. So you know, they become one year member, which is great for us because we can work on engagement uh, with more time. You know, with one month, 
typically people who uh, subscribe for one month, the channel is very high because they're just testing, they don't read, and yeah, I, I don't want that anymore. But with three months, it gets better, with one, with one year, it's really good. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah? All the uh, other metrics that is for us important, and again, this is just an example, you know, my, my goal here is that you need to find your metrics. You know, don't go to the Web Analytics Association and find the metrics that are there, or go to Google Analytics. Just find the metrics you need. In our case, this is another metric we need. We, in the premium model, we pay publishers a uh, red page. That means that we don't pay the book. What we measure is the number of pages that are actually read by users. Okay? Then we check how much money we've made in a month or a few months. We divide that, that by the number of pages. That gives us the price per page. And then, are you a publisher? 50% of the pages will come from you, then you get 50% of the money. 0%? 0% of the money. That's right. You know? Um, Yes, I don't want to go too much deeper with it, but basically, let's just say that this is totally different from what publishers are used to here. They are used to uh, getting paid per book. So this was uh, this is very difficult for publishers to understand, and this is and it makes sense for them because of course when we start, the price per page is very low because most of our users are going to be free. We are not going to have many uh, paid users, so the money we're getting every month is very low. So when we buy that. Uh, with the number of pages, the price per page is like this. So this is an incredibly important metric for us, which is the price per page. Because we have a threshold here. If we reach a threshold, which uh, we measure about 0 0.1 cent per page, 1 euro cent per page, basically, we would pay to the publishers the same amount they get from Amazon for the whole book. Okay? Basically, a bit less. But enough for publishers to say, oh, this can be good business. Okay? Are we here? No way. We are still very low. But we have this metric. I mean, we know this is the metric you know, we, we want to find in the premium that service. Okay? Okay, now, right now we have two different business models, so, uh, but because this is very hard, a very hard model to, to, to make it work. But this is an important, this has been a very important metric for us. Uh, and this gives you the success rate or not. I mean, this, if we, if we were already here, uh, right now, you know, we would be growing much, much faster, of course, because publishers would give us uh, many more books than what they give us to. Yeah. And how do you get publishers in the Yeah. Well, this is this one. Uh, the other is uh, convincing them with other weapons, like quality of the product, number of users, number of readers. Uh, for example, we provide a dashboard to the users so they know how many users, how many readers they have to book, which is something important, which tellers don't provide. So there are many other things. Uh, but at the end of the day, for the premium model, uh, the publishers make a bet on us. And this is kind of a good responsibility for us as well. Okay? But uh, this is how it works. You need to complete that. Which is a good part from the publishers? The feedback from the publishers is that, um, let's say, well, it's working well, I'll uh, go on a little bit more. Let's see. So we haven't had any publisher, sorry, one, one publisher in the UK to the books out. Basically because we are very focused on Spain, Spanish, and, you know, it was great to get a publisher because it's one of the best publishers in the UK. Mm -hmm. No, no, I can't get it. It's a, it's a Scottish uh, uh, publisher. Okay. <laughs> Now it's called Big Random House, it's in Korea, so it's very difficult. Um, but um, except for that publisher, we have no publishers taking it so That means that at least they're still betting, yeah. Which is good. I mean, and the number of users is going really high right now, maybe 600,000, and we're getting, we have actually growth, we now have like close to. 40,000 new users per month. So that, those are numbers that uh, help a publisher to say, okay, I'll we'll keep on trying. But we're giving not much money. The money we're giving is, is peanuts for that. And then to us, again, in the previous presentation, where you said, like, if you go for 24 months, you reduce charge, and then people get used to go to the platform. So before you were in the academy, you got that many features already, like, okay, we should go for uh, one year or 
any other kind of model? No, it was that we had to we were just starting. Actually, at the beginning, the promotion with Tatooine was one year for free. It was a mistake for us because they wanted one year, but for, for them it's great. But for us, we still have to wait for one year before we know if the promotion works. So we just uh, reduced it to, to three months. One month it was too long for Tatooine and it makes sense. But at least okay, every three months we're going to know whether this works or not. Uh, but we didn't have any metric at that time when we started. I mean, this is something we've been building a little bit more. We didn't have it seems like other kind of SaaS services like robots is doing this kind of race thing or Evernote just go for one year and then so maybe one year is like it seems like the mechanism for this kind of deal. Yes, yeah. For us it's a perfect thing. Uh, because more than money we need engagement. So if you want engagement of a user for a year, you have so many opportunities to and, and you know, from a business perspective, if you pay once per year, you're going to have to pay. You will have to credit cards. You know, I've been trying to cancel one of my credit cards for four years now. I always forget. <laughs> March comes, oh, I'm going to pay my year. <laughs> <laughs> next year, you know, next year. Uh, so even from a business perspective, that is much more difficult. I mean, how are you going to make somebody pay for a year? Uh, just like it's over. So we prefer to keep things you know, around you know, one, three, two, three, two, three months. Okay, and now, any question? Uh, this was the main part of the presentation. Uh, now it's going to go much faster. Question, comments? Uh, yeah, uh, it's true. Um, one has like to do so before about the cost of the acquisition. Uh, for example, any friction is a uh, uh, is it blue because of acquisition? Great question. Uh, we don't include development costs into the uh, acquisition costs, but you could, I mean, it's your decision. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Bessemer says something about that, says you should just focus on marketing and, code, marketing and sales costs. But again, uh, one thing is the, is the metrics you provide to your investors, and sometimes you are forced to provide standard metrics. Uh, others are the ones that are different for you. Uh, again, I could, I, I always talk to customers, and it was a <coughs> marketing cost, zero year. But the truth is that we were spending a lot of time out of marketing. So we need to add that cost into the creation of this other thing. Because if not, the number is not true. It's infinite or zero. I paid for that time. So for example, it's, it's up to you. Uh, but we, we haven't used the uh, development cost for, for this system. No. Uh, if someone pays, for example, still Europe for a pay yet, how much money are you giving to publishers and how, do you, how much money are you giving to your business? Well, the premium model is 70 30. We give 70 percent to the publishers and we give 30 okay. percent. Uh, and then we have to pay the payment platform, all of the uh, 70 percent goes to the publisher. Uh, we have another business model which, in which we pay per book. Uh, because it's faster to get publishers uh, paying their book. And the model is a little different. But the, the premium model is 70 30, which is standard in the publishing industry. So there's no discussion about the percentage. It's discussion about whether you know, I want you to pay the per page or something. Yeah. All right, um, so, so the other part of the presentation is more just a few slides about AD testing. I don't know if you have used AD testing, you know what AD testing is. You know, you know, what you guys know, sorry, well, the ones that know about that, uh, sorry, this is very basic, but um, there's that one key question uh, when you try to optimize your R cycle, which is that at the end of the day, everything is related to the business model, of course, but how your website looks. Okay? So, how effective is a web page compared to another? You don't know. And uh, your, your graphic designer can say that this is better than this other one, but that doesn't mean that it's going to engage the user or compel the user better. Uh, so this, this is a very simple thing in the government. In the last two, three years now, it's, it's quite obvious to do is perform A-B testing, which is a this very simple example. Out of all of your visitors, we are going to create two versions of your page. And uh, we're going to uh, distribute your visitors randomly to one page or to another without them knowing that this is another type of page. Okay. Uh, typically, typically, there's a small percentage, uh, but statistically significant, and then the, sorry, the small percentage 
uh, of, uh, of your visitors are going to see the new version, and then the rest of your uh, visitors are going to see the, the old version, the current version. And then you're going to basically wait a little bit until you have uh, get some statistically significant uh, results about whether this page is better or not than the other page. Okay? Uh, the good news about this is that now every single metrics tool, analytics tool, does that for you. Google Analytics, for example, has an experiment, uh, experiments uh, section on Google Analytics where basically you just need to provide the URL of the new version and then put a small JavaScript uh, piece on the uh, current web page. So when the user comes here to, let's say, personvalley.com, okay, uh, the JavaScript selects randomly if you're going to stay here or you're, you're going to be redirected here. And it also provides a cookie so that the next time you come, you go to the same page you were assigned the first time. Because they, they, you know, for any testing, it's important to have a, a consistent experience uh, to make sure. And then uh, you create your role in your analytics uh, side. Uh, for example, conversion rates, so how many people go from the web page to the sign up form and register. And then you can, well, the system is going to tell you whether that works or not. Okay. As simple as that. I mean, Three, four years ago, it was a little more complex, and the uh, tools that offered this were the, the, the high class, you know, Adobe or IBM. But now, basically, you know, Google Analytics provides this, uh, many, other, uh, many other tools provide this, so you don't need to go anywhere. Okay. Um, this is actually this is only just one, one concern. Um, uh, I recommend you to read this, this one. But basically, any testing is not perfect. Okay? So it doesn't work exactly in every single option. So you need to be aware of that. Okay, it's so optimal in some cases and other possibilities. But at the end of the day, uh, you need to use the tools that are available to you. And right now, I think is probably the best option that you have in order to know if uh, the button should be green or the button should be red. Another thing to take into account: A B testing works pretty well when there's one single change. Okay, from one page to another. Uh, if you start to make many changes. You don't really know where it works. You have no idea. So you have another option, which is called, and I can do that, multivariate testing. Multivariate as in statistics, multivariate. Uh, that allows you to say, OK, I'm, I want to test this, um, uh, this button in green and red. And this text is going to be sign up. Where are you waiting for? And the system automatically creates four uh, combinations of the pages. OK? And it tests all four combinations without the number. It works pretty well, but uh, for the guys that have worked really hard working with this, uh, they still recommend to do A-B test, testing one by one. It doesn't cost you anything. It just costs you, you know, I'm going to check if green is better than red. Typically, red is better than green. Okay? You know, people click on, on red buttons much better, much more than green buttons in general. But you need to test it when your, uh, your design works that way. Once you have that, then you can test all the things in your in your page. So that way, for example, I won't go back, but uh, remember the change we made on the page uh, to the infinite scrolling? We didn't do it testing. You know, it's, it was a huge change. It didn't make any sense to do A-B testing. You know, let's just change it and prep it you know, and see if it works or not. Okay, because A-B testing wouldn't work at all. We, we wouldn't know why it would work or not. Um, tools, uh, very basic ones. Google Analytics, uh, uh, good things, free, very easy to set up. Uh, bad things, at least for me, that can be discussed. Uh, very complex. Uh, if, if, if you agree with me that it's much better to focus on one, two, three uh, metrics, this is absolutely possible. You know, there are so many metrics here that like, where am I right now? Okay? We don't, I, don't, I don't like that. But it's free and we use it. Okay? Uh, so it's, it's, it's our, it's our uh, tool for the acquisition and activation uh, stages. The other thing that you have to take into account is that you can it, it also it, it only gives you aggregate information. It doesn't give you information about specific features. For most of us, that's not a problem. But if you need to know how a specific user is behaving, you need to install a server uh, with an analytics uh, tool for you. Okay, because these tools are not going to provide you with uh, specific information about users. That changes every day, so yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 
very quick. It's, uh, you can take a look at that. Case metrics uh, is a payment uh, platform that works pretty well. Uh, Mixed panel is another one. Grace AA that's for uh, heat maps. So you can see visually where people click on their pages. We don't use that uh, because you can get this information from statistics, from analytics. But, uh, um, Social Pro, Spanish company that allows you to manage your tweets. Uh, so it's you know, a Spanish company, it works pretty well. So it's <laughs> <laughs> um, that one. And just two minutes, and I'm finished. Very important for me. Uh, again, tools are great, but uh, we decided to measure our own metrics. So this is my tool. Okay, it's a tool for my So I get here, I don't know, I don't know, I can do it, I can put it here, and I have SQL queries to access everything I need from my customers, from my users. Okay, you need someone who understands a bit about this, but uh, for me, it's really useful. Okay, uh, something that a tool will be able to give. So, questions, conclusions, measure from day one. Okay, this, you know, uh, uh, we have a dashboard from the start where we can measure, we improve the dashboard, but from day one, we are implementing those metrics into our product. Have someone taken care of that? You need a data nerd and your, and your company. Uh, right now, it's me. Hopefully, there will be more data nets uh, in my company. Hopefully, because I don't have time for this. Uh, only measure what you truly care about. Okay. Uh, this is the the Occam's razor. Just go for the most simplistic way to measure what you need. Uh, but choose right. Here you have the Web Analytics Association. Here you have all the metrics in the world. Are the ones useful for you? That's up to you. you know, maybe yes, maybe not. But don't focus on on the standards. And uh, as I was I finished, uh, beware of banned metrics. Okay, please. They look great, 500,000 users. This looks great, but sometimes they may have an output. Okay, and this is the reality behind the sky. Okay, so this one time.
I can't or uh, I can do the same. Right? Uh, we both have to agree on the on the transfer. That's uh, the, the, the principle. In the way this this platform uh, asks you to provide uh, your the properties of your group. So what are you doing to train? Uh, my car, okay. You can ask these properties. And now we will generate a transfer from the buyer to the seller. And this transfer has to be seen by both parts with the with a private key. Okay. So if both have the parts see the, the transfer, the transfer is generated and uh, it goes to the blockchain in the, the way where the validated transfer goes. Uh, if both of them are, are agree on them, or it's okay, but if something happens in the middle, the transfer is just not generated. So of course you can uh, you can uh, your private key can be stolen, of course. But, uh, it happens in the real world too. If you keep your private key uh, secret, you should be able to use to sync all the transfer before they are emitted to the blockchain. That's the trust thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Why? Uh, because, uh, for example, if we have a platform and you want to register your item to make a transfer to trade with it, uh, we, as the owners of the platform, don't have access to modify your uh, your good. Only you, only you, the young, the young, the young. You can be transactional. You can't put me in in the steam. The 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 people or goods are in the database of the steam. The steam can can change the the the, the part in the database. We can change it because here now only only the owner can change the the part of the in the database. If you try to change anything without your private key, the the hash of the transaction is corrupted and it doesn't work. So even how uh, as how as provider of the platform can change anything just to create the same that you need just to be So how do you like a few from that perspective? I don't care about hash. I care about I care about why should I discover the transaction with you as the offer. Uh, we provide this platform that generates secure transfers and we ensure that that transfer that only can be completed by you and the buyer of the Yes. Do you know the difference? Uh, time is over, but maybe we have a later. Oh, yeah, of course. But the other way you can do it, the better will be performed. So, on one side, we have people that have no time and have money. And on the other side, we have found people that have enough time that maybe they need some extra money. So, Chetley is an online platform to connect uh, these two kinds of users around the government. Here you are one sample of the profile. As I put on Chetley, you are going to choose the type of food that you are going to cook. If you are going to deliver your own, the meat, 
uh, where I'm going to deliver it. If, if you are ready to cook every day or only for events, um, the rating is a very important field in service because if you have uh, positive reviews, the platform is going to show you more than the other books. So you will have more of them. We have a transaction fee model, business business model. The user is going to pay to the group for the bill, and suddenly is going to give a small fee of the transaction. There are several companies working on similar ideas right now in the world. One of them is Ubisco, that is not uh, running in Spain, it's focused on Greece, in Greece. Uh, Foodsitter, that is running in the UK, um, is focused only on families, not busy workers. Um, Google that has, has raised more than one million dollars in funding and is focused only on the next month. We are Paula Garcia and Carlos Andaluste. We are both of us software developers and we have some previous and the partnership experience with projects like Amazon. Thank you. Thank you. 
for looking um, for benefit for working spaces. But I feel that last week it was like a strain to start with that. Um, we are going to start focusing as well in uh, schools, schools. So we are trying to decide and um, explain this to for more of them that we have here. Students. It's like maybe I am going to confuse you. So it's not a bad
Just It's a very good example. If you have pitched four times, and the fourth times people have to ask you about the legal thing. And that's a great example of something that has to be in the presentation. Because obviously, every time you don't put it, someone is going to ask it. But maybe one time you won't have the opportunity to answer people are going to end up with doubts. So it's, some, it's a very good example of something that has to be. And that if they have asked you four times. Yeah, I was about to ask for something There's an open data fever. There's governments, institutions, and firms launching open data initiatives. And there are thousands of platforms right now. But they don't even work properly. So, for instance, over 60% 60, 60 of them lack search capabilities. They offer loads of information, but they don't even have a search bar. Over 85% lack user participation capabilities. So, people cannot even interact with that. And almost none of these websites uh, have fully updated data. So what do we propose? One single platform to collect all these open data sets with tools to provide uh, to provide contribution to the people using the platform. So we can keep our goal, which is provide fully accurate and updated data. And finally, additionally, we want to provide API to APIs to the third parties. Uh, access to a platform so they can process this data and offer it to cover all the data requirements every professional. So is there a real market? Well, yes it is. There are over two, uh, two, 200 million engineers, researchers, consultants that are uh, spending a fourth of their time looking for information. And taking into account their average salary, uh, they are, we can conclude that they are paid over $2,000 billion per year just to look for information. So we want to get money from advanced features such as pre-made repositories uh, to allow people to sell really specific data like the law, PhD uh, researchers or the one PhD graduates or researchers they collect. And we also want to provide dynamic links to report so whenever data is updated in our databases, you can get automatically updated in our in your reports. And we also plan to get money from the marketplace. So uh, all these applications to fully protect your data can be provided to this marketplace and we can get our cash. This is Fernando and Mario, and we both are happy. And sorry for the <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Change the name so we don't have this web page. So we just saw it. And we have really positive uh, news that people saying it was kind of cool. So. And we try to show that we can already upload information and edit it, but we had some problems with the development and we couldn't sell. So, like, 
sure on the last day we will show that. And today we were uh, going to the universities trying to get some developers for the platform. Which will be a lot of people and like working there. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, I understand the what, I understand the how. So after the presentation, I need to see how are you going to do it. Just give us a second interview and we'll explain it. <laughs> we cannot do it this way. Okay. You need to provide some more insights. So it was for me to be, you know, I, I can't, I still have to open the air more than that. I'll give you an idea you need the repository for this. Alright, yeah. if you give any insights, I will not talk to you. You have to give me something to, uh, I need to talk to this guy. Okay, so if there's something you need, it's a book. No, no, no. no. Okay, first here, uh, this slide is open. Well, it's. <laughs> You cannot have your Twitter account like just keep up. You can have space to do the air time. No, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. I'm going to the garden, so you can send it to you. Okay, okay. Whatever. PDF, PDF. Yeah. Man, PDF. No, PDF. Well, yeah. If you create a PDF, it's it's before uploading, then you cannot change the PDF. Okay. Okay. Congratulations. Uh, now, now people understand what you do, that's amazing, so congratulations, but I have a lot of <laughs> Okay. I do uh, okay, this one. Uh, this one. It's, uh, it's good that you are trying to explain your marketing, uh, but good that you try, but this is not real. It's uh, not uh, 15, 35 percent of time going to be searching for information. Yeah, but what you should say is how much time are you going to save to them? Yeah, right. you're not going to fix all the problems, or you're not going to do that. People just search <coughs> information, just click, and and, and they don't have to waste time. Okay. So you're not going to save all that money. Yeah, but they thought like. And this is huge, just to say, okay, when well, this guy's trying to say it's just 1% of the other for you? Yeah. Okay, if you think that, what's the problem? I think it could be much better if you have to be more active and more related to what you're doing. Another problem with the. Uh, okay, I don't remember where I can go. Yeah. To the business number, uh, you have to be careful when just saying we save so much money. Yeah. Because that also means that the people working on this area probably will be fired. So, and we are trying to sell that to them. <laughs> so, you should be careful because maybe they are. They start to make sure that they are helping them also. Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay, I, I, I want to give you kudos for the open sentence because it's very clear what, what, you, what you do that in other times uh, was, uh, open was with yeah, the open data repository. That's very clear. And the other is for the number slide that I will break out in four. But in four, with only one number each time, 
200 million, 210 percent asset instead of the foreign I think on the story of daily, it may feel sense like what's the problem, what's our solution. And uh, maybe related to the how, I think you know, on the team, right, you should, uh, or at least say why you're the team that is going to do this, right? This is our background, maybe we have been in program for five or ten years or whatever, so you can put like some way for, okay, we are going to do something huge and incredible and we have like the skills that so I don't know if maybe you should go there or maybe you should just say like you have experience working with these as consultants and so just to add some background to that. I do not know. In in the slide where you have the animation, the colors, the flag, I don't remember. Yep. If you're going to put that animation and then take it away immediately that nobody can see it, I think it's a bad idea. Don't use an animation if you're going to take it out. I mean, okay. if it's not so important, don't put it or don't put it in an animation because it was like, what happened? <laughs> and uh, I have seen a lot of time happening in the problems, the fonts. Maybe if you choose a no, more no. simple fonts, no. it will be better. But I, I have seen it happen. And I think that I like, I mean, I've seen your presentation before and I like this one way better, but I think one color could improve it because too much flag. I would put a tiny bit of color in the slide, so I mean, let's try it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> what changed, but I don't remember what I was saying here, is uh, it's good that you say that you have users giving uh, more data to your platform, but make it clear that you are going to compile all the information uh, open data and you are not only going to depend on the users of your platform. Okay. <laughs> Why one is a sad and other is happy? He's developer. Maybe just one one input. <coughs> Maybe you can use some photographs which are more familiar with the audio. For example, I don't know. Maybe after guitar, I know it because you know I work in the in the industry, but maybe it's not familiar for the so the audio. Okay. Yeah. Not very important. Maybe use a worldwide brand or something. Uh, first of all, congratulations. You, I think you found your way. You, you have to do a lot. Um, great. Very, very brave to start from the beginning. Uh, I think just really quick about the, the numbers, you should be careful because the numbers you use have to be big enough in order to be interesting, but cannot be like huge because then I think you're making it up. I mean, 2050 billion is like you were saying a billion, billion dollars. And it makes no sense. Because obviously you're just trying to make a big impression with your number. So if that number is not related to your company and you're not gonna be invoicing that, that might not be your revenue. So it, it means nothing. So pick, pick a number that that makes me interested, but not big enough to say that. Uh, okay. Uh, in America, for example, a company of 50 people, uh, we spend this money and maybe we can uh, earn this kind of money. So, but not the one way. Sorry, I didn't come the previous day, so I'm not sure uh, how you're going to approach uh, these different uh, organizations. Uh, but I mean, I'm kind of clear conscious of this uh, kind of money we are earning, but the, the guys that have to give you the data, how are you approaching it? Uh, from one side, they are already up to the data set and we can collect. But the point is, we cannot be collecting all these data sets all the time, yeah. so we depend on people. 
that's participating in the official website. So we plan to get like marketing area as we are just two Yeah, Just start with comments of this. Like we have private uh, repositories like GitHub, so this is our way of monetizing, whereas the open data is going to rely on the community. This is our model. So the open data is going to be updated and be ready to a community based model, whereas we plan to to close our platform to send these private records to to the company, to our companies we want to keep them private. Right. Okay. And, uh, and you think that's going to work with, with companies? That, that yeah, because uh, there's some sort of kind of companies in and they work just in teams. And mostly they can work in the new world or in teams. For instance, they have a the room where they have to exchange uh, data with other <laughs> clients. Uh, they have clients and consultants, so they can have a private people to, to share the data or they want to be okay. okay. This simple process, it has been demonstrated that the consumers could save up to 50% of their electricity costs. And just to show you one example, there are three scenarios in the chart. And in the best case, it could be possible to save more than 100 euros per year. Okay. And this uh, business case has been uh, developed with average data in a, uh, let's say, average family, uh, four members with uh, children's data for the next year. And, well, there is a, a potential market, and according to the, the, the market studies we, we have them, basically it seems that it could be a double digit year over year uh, growth. And, of course, this is because there is a lot of different projects and uh, trying to play here. And uh, more of them are coming from different areas, different sectors, from IPC, companies, communications, uh, providers, uh, also home automation, uh, developers, uh, electricity, distribution companies, etc. etc. And of course, we want to be here. What is the, our commercial approach? Uh, we think that as for the activation of commercial activation, we have uh, a very close contact with our distribution channel, which we want to use to, let's say, to start to uh, 
demonstrate the capacities of the system. And then we will use the web page, uh, basically an uh, online soft platform, in order to facilitate all the sales process to the residential customers. At the same time, we are, let's say, evaluating the, the possibility also to, to invest in other markets, like the small media uh, industrial companies, which will be also interested in the industry. My problem is that the only uh, the measure that is really important is the last one, which I totally don't want to say. Yeah. I think the other one doesn't get uh, too much information. And the other thing that I want to say that you have a, a really, really good and really, really clear uh, business case. Uh, I should put this here. For example, uh, in the, the best scenario, uh, you earn uh, 20, uh, 120 euros, and the cost of the Calatio is 150. So you are going to earn money in the, in the second year. This, this kind of information is really clear. Yeah, well, it's something that we do. Ah, this is the same. Okay, okay. Yeah, maybe I can save one. Investors don't want to see it. It looks like an internal exercise for you, which is great, yeah. but then you should make it much simpler for the workers who want to see it. But uh, the key, the leaders, and the ones who want to differentiate uh, yourself from. But do you think that the matrix approach is correct? Or? I like the matrix, but there are too many items. <coughs> but, you know, there are more. Yes. And yeah, but, so it looks like a great exercise for you. I mean, I think it's the same. You take it at the end. The key leaders and where you come up with that should be okay. If they want to know more, they ask. The second thing is, is um, I guess we're talking about 15% uh, uh, trading savings, uh, basically. Uh, I'd like to know the cost of your service to know whether a user product makes sense to hire you or not. Well, we, we think that a uh, good target could be 150 euros for the whole package, okay, the power plus the piece of software. And yes. Yeah. No, no, just uh, one payment, okay? And we have received a lot of feedback regarding this approach, and we think that could be also interesting maybe to have uh, a free access tool, software, application, let's say, for one year, and then to have different fees depending on the functionalities you are The last recommendation is to use lifetime value, CAC, those are going to be the we are going to ask every single each year. That's right. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, on the graph, I also agree, like, it doesn't, for me, could you go back to the, to the, the first thing? Yeah. So, if we are in 40 years, it could take, like, more than three years to return back yeah. your investment. Uh, and I don't know if people would be willing just to go for such a long return. Yeah. So I, and I really don't know if users would be able to know their savings beforehand for paying for the energy business also. But I am I'm more thinking right now on a community level. In this graph, it's like going up is better, like, because it's saving time 
And the next one is kind of the overall of the market one. So uh, this is going to be used. This is some big numbers, and the other one is like going down the road. So it makes some kind of um, uh, what, what's what's the if I make more savings or you know like the one you're growing and the other one you're increasing. You're saving all the money you're spending. At least for me, it makes me wonder like, okay, is this is some kind of progression or because you're basically adding up every month. So maybe this is trying to figure out a way that it just basically how much money I'm going to save. Big number. <laughs> Uh, on the last slide, when you have to, when you tell your story, then tell everything about what it is. Can I move on the number? Can I have to be 50% from the other one? Because we have to be clear. So when you have to make the content in the matrix, then you have to cut the way to solve it. I'm not so sure that the actions that you are selecting are the way you have to change the way. If I am wrong, you have only one slide or you need to think of yourself. Okay? Can you please? This one. This one. Then there is another one. Yeah. 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 Um, I think the, the image, so you are telling what is in the middle of the slide. Yeah. There are a bit, uh, okay. and it looks like something in certain like a whole technique. So I don't know if that's what you have, but maybe. Let's figure out that. I am waiting. No, it's not like that. Yeah, okay. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> I think maybe it's your your engineer that can hold him back. But maybe you, you, I think there are too many charts. I mean, for in this slide, several people have commented. One with the savings, the chart really doesn't have anything because the chart is for like trends and stuff. And right in that side, the only thing you were trying to say is that how much you can save a year, what percentage. You don't even chart for that. I mean, there are other ways that you can make your point. Yeah. That probably are more effective than So use a chart when you, when you need them, not because. Because I have them. Yeah, yeah, not because you love them. Maybe I was in France and I'm doing the same thing. You have too many charts and it's too much information that is not really useful to make your point. Maybe you should try to humanize a bit your presentation. Yeah. part of the thing. So as a, as a customer, I, I would have no doubt to contact you if I have 50% of my savings. That's the ESCO model, no? the energy services corporation model, that I first and make the same investment, and then, then I get the investment back with your cycle. That's how I come over for it. Yeah, well, it is working. It would be risky, maybe, but yeah, I will evaluate it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I was thinking that at the beginning of the presentation, you said that there is a big problem or a big opportunity or something. I think maybe there's, you have a chance to engage more the others. So, for example, say, Imagine how much you would say, for example, in my case it would be, I don't know, the number in the chart. Uh, yeah, uh, so like make it like, I, imagine how much you would say, this is my example, this is what I want to talk to you with, and it's interesting <coughs> to, to make it a little more human, like, like okay. I said. I, I mean, when I was giving feedback for the previous presentation, I really liked your thing. Because it's really focused on your background related to the project. So it really is clear that you were you have been working for a lot of years and you have experience in this area and I really think it really makes sense by going to your platform. Yeah, and uh, my concern is that I have some gaps as you know uh, in from the software side. 
and I do not show it. This is a way to show it from the beginning. Uh, I think that nobody knows everything about them. So yeah, of course. <laughs> if you grow, you will have to find it. Well, it's easier to find a software engineer than an expert in an electricity market. I miss uh, some information about the uh, you start a hardware in the electricity circuit, but how it's uh, giving the tools to set the energy. the next conference on time to paper, she is starting to be afraid. Afraid of becoming out of time to accomplish all her um, research tasks like experiments, uh, conclusions for the next journal, and, and, and well, anything. But because the, the conference is draining her time, so she starts to look for a tool she tried some generic tools like Excel, she realized it's not in the 90s, so she tried WordPress, and it isn't enough. Uh, she thought of a custom tool, but it's lengthy, it's costly, and it's quite risky. She tried uh, a generic event management tool, but it's too much generic because it lacks of specific features for academics, and it's quite expensive for a medium specific conference. So she Googled for some a specific group for academics, and there's quite a bunch, but some of them doesn't help her with the proceedings, others uh, are not individuals, others uh, doesn't allow her to, to use a, a, a good payment um, service. So there isn't anyone that can really help her with, their, with her tasks. Well, she remarks she, she has seen something called SpotConf sponsoring a conference last year, and that tool and um, launch only with a click, a display, a free domain. She can try it for 50 days. And, and her data will only be only be hers because it's based on open source. And it's only $50 a month. She doesn't have to ask permission today to add it to the budget of the conference. This product is brought to you for, by this humble engineer who has been working for the last 10 years in research organizations and has also some startup experience as an employee. I'm really eager to, to share it with you. I'm launching the private data in next summer. And um, that's all for, for today. Thank you very much for your time. Well, I hope well, well, I, I work in the, in the hack account in the in the virtualization of the of the conference uh, management tool that is open source, so it's really. But well, I I have not the prototype, but I will solve most of the of the main problems so that I can integrate in the next weeks. But um, this Monday and, and yesterday, I discovered how easy it is becoming to to 
titulado se ve en Machine Gun, los I static, I static dis displays because it was easy, but now it's as easy that my mother can do it. And, <laughs> uh, I can not uh, put all the eggs in, the, in that basket. So uh, I want to, to move a step aside and, and do like a spot comp, a spot for a site where all the conference <coughs> can be announced and people can say where, where are you going this, this year and offer them to launch the virtual machine but not as, as, the, as, the only, as the only thing and provide to come uh, announce to conference even if you are not using our, our tool. So to have a knowledge of where the people are going, what conference are better, which one were most weak, like here, and these kind of things. So uh, that's my uh, homework in the in the business side more than in the in the technical. And I think that's that was the name also because I have some legal issues, you know. Uh, no, not so not so bad. But we wanna come this we discovered last week that it's a kind of a start up. And <laughs> uh, we move to <laughs> to this name. So, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I like your presentation, and I just know your presentation. So, uh, I'm um, again, it's like how big this market can be, how many companies are run in space, so that this can be a business which can be a fifty thousand dollar a year uh, website. So, I'm just trying to. I would like to see that in the future. Yeah, yeah. I, I find it interesting. Yeah. I'm very proud because in, at the beginning of the two, two, three first uh, sessions, the, the question was, I don't understand the business. So, <laughs> so I think it's not what I'm worried about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm very proud of the business. I'm very proud of the business. I'm very proud of the Hola, I'm I like so much the way that you have to develop I like so much the way that you have to develop the, the features of the spot post in a few videos. And another thing that I would like to see you contact with people is the cost of some value in the of students. Yeah, yeah. I think it's <laughs> so, uh, my first, when I see this presentation, I just can figure out it's some kind of Spotify component. <laughs> Maybe it's because I use it as a sort of like spot change pages. I run it every day, so the green plus the, yeah, the, the fonts and the, I don't know. It looks like one five configuration tool or something. <laughs> 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 this is the first thing when I, when I saw the presentation that just came to my mind. So, and the other thing, based on, on A B testing, maybe as a suggestion, you could try to switch the paper of simply maybe could be the team and they would be the student. And let's yeah. try because I think. In, in academic in academia, I think these roles are kind of you know, you know like, like the big box, like all spirits and, and the jam students. Maybe you should try to swap it and just or run random. Run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. It's quite hard to, to make an AB for a bit, but <laughs> just run <randomize. laughs> I I found kind of weird that uh, you offer this uh, for $50 per month and, and you have like 30 days for free. Mm -hmm. How much time does it take to, to prepare a conference? Okay. Months. Uh, at, least, at least six months because people has to, um, to know it, has to decide if they will go. Uh, many conferences but, uh, that um, Will be run next summer. And next summer, no. Next year, the summer will be announced in October. So, because people have so many, from nine months to twelve is the is the common length. And maybe 
many will try again the next year because many are okay are done year after year. I think that should be. I think that should be. Yeah, maybe there are so many numbers here, and they like. Yeah. And do you think that thirty days for free would make a difference for some kind of what? Thirty days for free would make a difference. So much for it was just. Uh, most of the competition, uh, the, the, the reason why is I uh, it's easy for me to launch, and many of the, of the competitors are offering you to ask for a market. And, I, and I'm offering you to, to try and, and play and design the big skills for So uh, that's why. Okay, I think the problem is your model is to sell companies, to sell this for a company. company is something that lasts for one year. <coughs> so that's the only process. So, giving for 30 days is not true. Yeah, you can give for free, okay, you can register two conferences and 10 people. And yeah. nobody's going to be able to run a conference with that. So, you are sure that if they like it, they'll pay you. But you are giving them something useful that they can use after all. Giving 30 days, so okay. it's not, I am not going to pay you. But she can decide in the big debate. If it's useful, and uh, can I start with my tool instead of asking for the partner? That's my idea. I don't know. But I have to say, that's what. Well. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to try it with me on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I, I have to try it. I don't know. What I mean is, if you can no one registered in the first year, you can do it with the first year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, but if, if 10 people are already, already registered on your, on your platform, then, then they have to stay. One, one, one thing, uh, you mentioned that uh, the uh, person that organized the conference owns your data for your official work. That's not true. If they don't own their data, if they don't know your version and they start in their phone. Their, their so, the same as Yeah, so you said it was not true, so try to explain it in a way that. Mm. My bad. Okay. You were agreeing with me. Okay, so maybe I agree with the 30 day model instead of this model because if you have this low user, you can go with lots of many instances with two users and nobody is in them. But I, I like. Like, I don't know if it's like kind of homework, just to try to evaluate, like, to say, like, low time value of the conference. Because one of the most interesting things you, you said the other day is like most people are interested in archiving conference, so they can be stored for a long time. So maybe you say, if I can make a yearly conference and I, get, I can just maybe have them pay yearly, I know that most people would like to host the conference for five years. So, in that way, you know, more or less, maybe you can try to go to an archive that has archive.org. You can go there, look for conferences, see how often they change and how long are they, maybe they are for years. And then you say, okay, most conferences are for three years, so I know if I get a conference, I'm going to get a look. The problem is that Thank you. I think that the price should be something that comes from your research. Because yeah. I think the that you randomly chose $50 because it sounded more than right. Am I right? And it should come from your research. I mean, you should know how much money a conference costs and, and what's their budget and what percentage of them it would be reasonable for you to get because you're the, probably one of the most important tools that we use. I mean, I'm not saying keep the wrong. But I'm saying that it should be more I don't know if we so, well, maybe you realize that the, the pitch is maybe more oriented to, to the user, to the buyer, than to investors. So I say the final phrase, I could compare it to competitors or others uh, other uh, to make that the, the other sense. <laughs> I 
there is a lot of value. So my suggestion would be to give it free for the Lord of the but be able to actually monetize on that Because that's very bad. In my case, I think and there are so all of us right? concerns. But the value for potential uh, advertisers to these people attending, I think that's a huge value. You could be some agreement with the organizer to actually be able to use that data. That, that would be more than you would need. It's a new way to discover uh, what is going around the dimensions that run and then for a topic online news and social media. Okay, all of us are familiar to sexual information in the traditional Google sample. Okay. Uh, if you look for information in this example from Obama, you get a flat result just we are here to show you a new way how to search information about an uh, entity or a person, a friend or a The search it could look like this, but what about if you start looking like this, okay? What we offer to you is a simple way, just in a quick, you get all the relationship about what the people is saying in your about the brand or the person. Or even we have different views, okay? Maybe you are interested about the sentiment and the trend, how the things are going, if it's positive, negative, or neutral. Also, we categorize and analyze the sentiment around the topics, okay? So you can manage in the time window the information related on the categories or brand or person in the different sources. Also, you can discover what, what is behind that categories. In this case, we have politics, economic, health. And, that's and also, we provide a quick vision about what you're looking for. Okay? In this case, it's Obama. You have the sources where appear, the sentiment, who are the most people workers, and the content related to the categories. Okay? We have three different products. Okay? We offer uh, analytics and reporting. Okay? And you, you log in and you, and you search your queries. We also offer an API where you can get uh, our data and reach information. And, uh, and also, we offer our research services. Okay, I don't know, maybe, for example, if you are looking for a writer that don't have a distributor, okay, you can find it here with, with this tool. Related to competitors, there is a lot of competitors, but what we have to find is we have the competitors that just talk about news, there are especially some influential. There are some that do text analytics in news and social media, but no one does new social graph analytics. We have to Google and JQ and Yahoo because of course we can do more. Okay? This is the team. The team we have David Corral is our CEO and our chief data officers. Rodrigo Soarri Roy is our CTO and user experience expert and myself Nigrita the CMO and business developer. <coughs> okay get the whole picture with the thinker and research. Okay, uh, homework. Uh, what we did uh, in the hackathon, uh, we work in our landing page, and also during this week, uh, all the team have been working in some changes. We have some icons, and now we're going to figure out what kind of things 
one that we want to use right now. Uh, we saw the, the log, we, are, we have already ready the login, so you can just add user and password, and you can get to our back again. And currently, we are gathering information. We have here 5,402. This it's afternoon increasing. was increasing, like 500 and 600. Uh, now we can we have categorized all the sources, the entities, and models, and also we got we have ready a, a trend chart with the sentiment and where you can find it. And what else? Yes, um, we have an interview uh, with Anna Pachea, uh, the chairman, the vice president, the contact. And the lesson that we learned today, uh, we were expecting open source in data and, and yeah, data journalism. Uh, but she told us that there is no money there, so I'm going to spend your time on it for a part to remove the different kinds of companies. Um, that's it. So it's still more of it. Yes. That's it. Very, very powerful things. Uh, just one more comment, maybe in the, in the product slide that you have, maybe you can put it in color or something like that with a symbol or an icon or whatever. Yeah. Or uh, maybe a screen of your, for every single product. You don't take a, a, a brand example instead of a map or a map. So I think yes. maybe it's better because <coughs> the brand is the, perhaps your your specialty and more. Yeah, uh, it's one of the, the clients that we could have. Yes, we have got the the product works for brand for events for a specific topic for one person like. Some provide one. And we are using it, we started with this paper. So. But yes, it, it, could be, it could work. We could have maybe testing. And the other, the, the logo of the week, yeah. you're saying that the same thing is yeah. the colors of, uh, I don't know. Yeah, we need to change good. it. We need to figure out all the design and name and the rest of the thing. You need your own point now. Yeah. Yellow and white. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be a pain in the ass, but Barack is Steve K. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 Same story. <laughs> Second one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I agree with him about the example because I was figuring out like something he told the other day where people you interviewed were mostly uh, looking for brands. And as I was thinking about Barack Obama and the brands, and uh, I was figuring out who would be your customer because, okay, Barack, what's the trending thing about Barack Obama? Maybe there is a war and people are not aware that there's a war. Of course, there are war. So maybe if you if you look for examples on the corporate or on brands, maybe they, they would make more sense. Even in that case, because I, I know you are focusing on political parties, that's one of the things you want to know, like what are people talking about my party? And it would make more sense to focus on the party than on the on the particular people. And also I I like the sentence on the last slide rather than the one in the first, because the first one was like the, the new way to look for your Twitter friends or something like this, like practice digital mentions, and all the other examples were not related mostly to mention, because mention I think is like super related to Twitter right now. Okay. And when you say like get the whole picture, it's like okay, so you're going to look for, and the other way looks like more social network analytic play, and I disagree with you, Cesar. I think you should do it, correct? And I think you should uh, get people to understand what you do. Maybe something more catchy, but at least this definition you did makes people 
have a rough idea of what you do, and it's very difficult. So yeah, try to find something more cool. Um, like get the whole picture, doesn't define what you do. But we found what we were thinking about the example is okay, if we are going to try to explain this with a specific company, uh, somebody can not know the company or something like the uh, the feelings of a company. But everybody knows that uh, the problem for the particular engine and so on. So and another yes. thing that we talk about is that the proposal of this is that if we go, for example, to BBA external we can, we can make the presentation for them. So yeah. would like I, I don't know if it's a good idea, but I think it's really really important to to tell them this story with their uh, brand. It's good, but you are not only going to be pitching for your your clients, yeah. you will have to be everywhere and be very different environments, and different situations, different problems. You need to, to be able to explain what you do. And I have to congratulate you because you do a lot of it. I think the only problem with speech is that if you are too focused on your product, you explain too much of your product, you don't need to explain so many details. Like I love to see all of this, and I, I, I give in me it says like oh very cool. I want I, I want to see this this API, but uh, if you take too long, and you know, there is a little thing that you don't explain. And so that, yeah. 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 But don't no waste so much time explaining your product. Like people get interested, and that's who you want. Okay. Uh, Rana, this one then. Uh, I just, I'm getting a little worried because it's like the third thing that, and they say what they did in the hackathon, they say you were on our landing page. And in demo day, you're not supposed to show a demo of your landing page, you're supposed to show a demo of your product. And maybe you should spend more time on product and not on so much on landing page. Because in the end, I'm, I'm telling this now because in your case, your page was really good and it, and it shows a powerful product. And if after that pitch you come and show me something that does nothing, I'm going to really disappoint. So if you're going to make all these claims, you have to have something to show. So remember that in demo day, you have to show them what you've got, not to do a landing page. We'll be ready. Don't worry, Frank, because they work okay. very hard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and when you talk about if you show the slide, is that slide or is it a mock up? It's live. You did a pie chart, it's live, and it's getting in real data. And we have been like two weeks telling data. Well, it's increasing the number of articles. Yeah, we have to We have more graphic, one more graphic ready for me to put it. And we are going to do our own hackathon. About the logo. So if you're not going to do anything else about it, at least put the font in black because I mean, <laughs> very relevant. And minor detail, I think in the beginning of the slides you have too many slides and you don't even give the people time to digest them. Uh, especially the one that you say, it could look like this, the member, or it could look like this, I don't know. I was like, okay, if I'm focusing on you, I'm not focusing on the slides, not necessarily. So I'm listening to you and then I miss it and I think less slides with the same concept would be fine. Okay, uh, three points. First one, I agree with Carmen in the lack of uh, model, the current model. And then about Barack Obama, I find it uh, a bit like I need a use case. What I, I want to look about Barack uh, Obama, what I want to get about, uh, why I'm looking about. And the third thing is, I, I really like your product, and I think it would be much more powerful if you could compare things like Barack Obama against someone, or I don't know, Canon and Nikon. Yeah. Yeah. We got it online with yeah. something on the moment. That would be a very interesting use case. Yeah. Okay. 
kind of competitors without no well, you know they are competitors in this area maybe one of the names and then find that a fit of them. You just have to give the print that they know them and then to write them so that they know how to do them. or have their own company to share their content. We are going to provide them a marketplace to buy their, uh, their lights. So uh, Eagles is going to provide a smartphone app. So if you are at least you can find uh, information depending on the location, who is going to create the, the guide, how, le how long does it take to take the tour, and also we're going to provide uh, um, ratings and comments so uh, you know uh, how the people uh, have with this experience. So for the people who is going to create the guide, we are going to create a web platform where they can create the, the guides and also insert the audio guides. Also, they, they, are, they will be able to create, to manage, and see how many downloads uh, the guides are are having and how much money they are um, uh, taking with it. Where is the money here? With every transaction, uh, it is going to have like uh, a small percentage and we're going to give the larger percentage to the people that create the guide. So, thank you very much. Oh, 
And for the demo day, I'm trying to create um, a page more. I don't know if it's functional because I have all the work to create a guide and deliver to a smartphone app is a really hard work. But I will try to focus on have the experience and, and more or less have a vision of everything. And Two things. Um, two comments. The one is that uh, I think that the, the discussion of your product in my opinion is more related to the business model, the idea that people can take their own public guides and then become authors, than about the product. There are many travel guides that work like yours. There's no differentiation there. But I, I, I feel more interested about you know, how you can change the travel life world and the travel life industry by doing this. And my second thing is, is this guy. Uh, every single slide is a tool. And I see that I do place it, and I see industrial engineer. And I don't care if you're an industrial engineer. I don't care about what you provide to the crowd, I'm not going to ask. I can just see So, you know, I have to focus on, on the tool that we have there. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to ask you about the tool that we have there. Uh, so let's talk to the uh, Not more. Uh, so the okay. the story you know, the I don't know. The story you want to tell is just to make sense. You don't get an idea. Or an audio tool. Yes, we got a lot of um, material with public, not so much to do that. So you'll be happy and you know what to do on it. So I think you have to think on this part. Because I think it's not a lot of that we have came out from this one.
Just try it, okay? Okay, the third thing very, very important is that we have a very, very bad uh, neighbor that is crazy and, it's, and we hate him. And he is uh, against the hub and, and he called the police the second week. The third week we don't have any problem because we go out by the front door because one of the, the, there was another event there, so there was no problem. There was no problem because we have a house and we could uh, get out on the front door. But this time we have to go again there. So, no noise, no conversation, nothing at all until we turn the, the corner because the window of this guy, it's, uh, <laughs> it goes to the street. Uh, so if, 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 if we go out to the street and we start talking in the street, he's going to call the police and, and the house is going to get in trouble. So please, no words, okay? We're going to the Irish path uh, of the other day. Okay, that's all. Thank you.